a stunning loss in the first Big 12 title game. The scene then moved to Lincoln. It's going to throw on third down. Rolling, tossing, diving, touchdown, Texas! The Longhorns snapping the Huskers' 47-game home win streak. And the major will do it on first down, got a slam. Touchdown, Texas! Six weeks ago in Austin, the Longhorns made it three straight upsets. Round four is next. Welcome, everybody, to the Dr. Pepper Big 12 Championship. Here come the Longhorns. When the Big 12 started four years ago, a lot of folks said this would be the key rivalry. And today, Texas and Nebraska come together to play for the Dr. Pepper Big 12 Championship. Good afternoon. Welcome, everybody, with my partner, Gary Danielson. I'm Brent Musburger. Nice to have you along with us. It is so appropriate that the coaches in the Big 12, Gary, voted for the two quarterbacks, Major Applewhite of Texas and Eric Crouch of Nebraska as the co-offensive players of the year. And Brent, you know what's so neat about it? It kind of symbolizes college football because they're so diverse in the offenses. You know, first Major Applewhite, if you look at this guy, a year ago, everybody said Ricky Williams carried him. He comes back this year and sets records for Texas throwing the ball. He has to be a good decision maker for that offense to go. But Eric Crouch, I mean, when Nebraska settled in on Eric Crouch, Nebraska settled down and played their best football of the year. A little different style. He's going to carry the ball a lot. But when he goes well, then Nebraska offense goes well. You know, in each of the last three games, Nebraska has been the favorite. They've lost all three. So guess who's the favorite today? Nebraska again. Go figure. Jack Arood, along with the head coach of the Nebraska Cornhuskers, Frank Solich. And Frank, you've decided not to dress the sophomore tight end, Tracy Wistrom. Yeah, he has a, a knee injury, and uh, he tried to uh, uh, come off of it this week and get in the game, but he wasn't able to, so we're going to have to go without him. He's a great player, but we have some good uh, tight ends, certainly. It should be a great game between two excellent football teams. Do you, are you at all concerned, though, about the fact that you're going to have an untested tight end in there? Well, you always want uh, you always want your starters, you always want your experience in there whenever you can have them. That's not going to be the case at tight end, but that's okay. We'll do fine. Good luck, Coach. Thank you. There is one of the tight ends. That's the freshman, Aaron Galladay, out of York, Nebraska. Texas coach Mac Brown, this is his first Big 12 championship game. Remember, it was John Makovic who coached. The ball is on the tee with Joe Walker awaiting the kickoff. He's back deep with Rams. And we are underway in San Antonio, Texas at the Alamo Dome. Walker from five deep gambles. Right side, bad gamble. Eric Crouch will bring the offense out. And we asked Eric, what do you expect from the Texas defense in the first series? Oh, well, something I remember from the last game is they blitzed uh, almost on every play, either one way or another, uh, with uh, backers or corners, uh, safeties. Uh, so you got to anticipate that some type of blitz is going to be coming. They dash out from the sideline here, Gary Danielson. Brent, that's exactly what happened. Kyle Reese, a little bit of different game plan this time, though. They're going to blitz inside out, not outside in. I think Nebraska's going to try to pound them. They open with both tight ends. The Bates and Galladay back in a flex. Moves in motion, power to the left side of the formation. And Alexander with the game's first carry. Remember, he scored against Colorado. And he rushes his way out near the 30-yard line. Our Dr. Pepper starting lineup. The fellas up front. Dominic Rayola, all Big 12 this year for the Cornhuskers. Wide receivers with the two tight ends. They'll try to get the ball into Bobby Newcomb's hands, the junior from Albuquerque, New Mexico. You just saw Dan Alexander, the junior running back out of Missouri. Willie Miller is the fullback. A first down on their opening play with a power look for the Cornhuskers. Keeping on the ground, Alexander, and nothing doing against a very talented defensive front. 
Aaron Humphrey, number 49, makes the game's stop at the line of scrimmage. Hampton and Rogers, outstanding tackles, have wooded the other end. The linebackers tend to be small, but they are very active. We'll see Anthony Hicks a lot. He plays well against Nebraska. The fellows on the corner, Brooks and Hill, they must hold up. 5'9", five, 5'8", five, but can Nebraska exploit their lack of size? Sean Rogers, who played so well six weeks ago, down into the trenches now. Movement. And a flag for four, and Aaron Galladay, the freshman, uh, appeared to jump the snap. Prior to the snap, false start on the offense. I'd like to still play with that. Interesting contrast from the opening game, Brent. Very seldom do college football teams play each other twice in the same year. Remember the last game, Nebraska opened up with basically four wide receivers and tried to finesse Texas. Now they're going two tight ends and trying to power the ball upside in the middle. Second down and 15. This would be a passing situation for most teams, but we'll have to see. Here's the option crouch. Wants Alexander on the pitch. And he rushes for 16 yards and a Cornhusker first down. Whoa! Lee Jackson just put a hit on Eric Crouch that time, and Crouch can expect that all game. Crouch running the option is going to get a big-time hit from the strong safety coming right here. Watch this. Option coming down the line. Here comes the strong safety. Crouch is a little late pitching the ball. Look at that hit. Texas's game plan will be to pound Eric Crouch and make it pay off in the second half. And let me correct that. That was Buckhalter who had checked into the backfield on that option look. He and Alexander rotate, so I made a mistake, and Buckhalter comes right back behind the left side of that offensive line. Let's take a look at the Dell game solutions and how it sets up. When Nebraska has the ball, the game plan is going to be to conserve Eric Crouch, keep him back in the pack like a marathon and runner, and then the second half make a sprint for it. And it's very simple. Keep it or punt it. No fumbles, no turnovers, and that's going to help them win the football game. Texas defense, number one, pound Eric Crouch. Make it pay off in the second half, and there's a lot of talk about turnovers. Tackle first, then strip the ball, not the other way around. The fullback Miller, huge hole on the right side, and he pounds for another first down behind Rayola and Hochstein, who are blowing huge holes on the left side of that defensive front right now. Just remember six weeks ago how the Texas defensive line, Hampton and Rodgers, dominated this football game. Nebraska going to run right at Remember A&M just a week ago, Jamar Toombs, 122 yards, very similar in the size to the Nebraska tailbacks. Five rushes, 45 yards for the Cornhuskers. Coming back, Miller, and nothing doing that time. All right, let's pick this game. Somebody's got to go out on a limb here, and I know you're not going to help me, are you, Brad? <laughs> <laughs> a little bit of a check right here for the Texas offense. A little bit of a check for the Nebraska defense. A big check right here for the special teams. Great punting and kicking. But here's a big check for Texas. The fumbles and the turnovers. I'm calling it even. Can't disagree with you. Mark. All right. Second down now, and Nebraska may throw for the first time here in this game. Thomas out wide to the right. Newcomb is slotted in the left with Davison outside him, and they do not. Keep it right on the ground. Run that option look right out. It's working, and Buckhalter is out of bounds at the 45-yard line, a pickup of about four yards on the play. So clearly, Gary, Solich and staff have come to run. Yes. They're going to put a helmet right on this Longhorn defensive front and see what they can get. Casey Hampton coming from the backside here puts a hit on Eric Crouch, but if you're a quarterback, that's a soft one from behind. But you're right, Brent. Texas is going to have to prove to Nebraska they can stop the running game. Now, Crouch for the first time back in the shotgun on a third and six. And a quarterback draw, nothing doing. He's pounded again. He's going to absorb a lot of punishment. The Longhorn strategy, keep pounding the quarterback until we get into the fourth quarter. That was DeAndre Lewis, the sophomore out of Houston. Yeah, and remember, Eric Crouch wore down against Colorado. 
Frank Solich only called three pass plays in the second half. One of the reasons is Eric was hurting. And this is, that kind of wears on you. You get hit all game like that. Gary, I know you've got to run, but in one of those situations, wouldn't you have put it up once? Well, I could throw a little better than him. Yes, I think I would. <laughs> but I think Nebraska's going to play a field position game early in this football game. Maiden felt an outstanding punter. Hangs it high. Garcia signals fair catch and makes the grab at the 10-yard line. 33-yard punt. Texas will have its first possession back on their own 10-yard line. Five out. Was I wrong on the first carry? No, Alexander started. He did start. Yeah, Alexander started. I was wrong Pretty on the Pretty good coaching. They brought him in to pitch it to him. Yeah. They brought it in to pitch it to him. But I got it corrected, so everybody was right. We're fine. Right? Yeah, okay. Now, on this one, Gary, yes. as we come out, yes. you're going to talk time. about... So it and Drew, the, the shot would be Davis up in the right. booth right. to tie it in with what he's going to say. And then I'm going to uh, just go to Keo Craver a little bit. Remember, he popped off saying, I hope they come right at me, kind of build the story there a little bit. No, don't, I don't like that no, picture coming back no. out. You know, when he's talking. Kind of weave it to him if you can. Or I mean, if you don't. Because I'll ask Gary about. Uh, right. right. If not, it, we'll just we'll just make it go. Whoa. Boy, they ripped a few runs in there for early. I know. Crouch You're right. Got pounded. Got pounded. Crouch That's going to be pounded. the game plan. They want to put together a package for a special early. For the second half right. out. Yeah, Take, hits. Get hits. a good one of those packages of three big hits on him. How about Lee Jackson's first one out? Woo. Would be an awesome one of those little, here's yeah, what happened package. back in the first half. They really went to work on crowds. Gary, here comes the first play from Texas. Yeah, watch Greg Davis, the coordinator for Texas, likes to send a message early. Last time he went right at Keel Craver to tell him, be ready, the young corner. And the basic eye from the 11-yard line. And draw play, and Nebraska cannot hit Hodges on the first hit. But they slowed him up enough. And it is a loss of yardage for the Texas running back. Now our Dr. Pepper, Texas offensive line, only senior there. Roger Raceler, very quiet, played high school from Marshall High right here in San Antonio, Texas. The wide receiver is Kwame Cavill, one of the best, breaking Texas records every time he goes out. The major, the quarterback, Hodges Mitchell behind Ricky Brown, primarily a blocker, sometimes a receiver. Now it'll be second down and 12 as Hodges Mitchell loses two yards on his first carry against the Black Shirts. Off the play fake. Going deep, down the middle, incomplete. Third down, coming up, Jeremy Jones stretching the defense. And it is an outstanding defense. Up front, Steve Warren out of Missouri leads the way, the senior defensive tackle. The linebackers very active, and they're all so deep. Behind those three, they go another two deep on the outside. Great defensive back play from Mike Brown and Ralph Brown, not related. Both made the all Big 12 team this year. Now on third down. Frank Kwame Cavill's way out here. He's drawn extra coverage so far at the beginning of the game. Texas spreads the field. They put Apple White back in the shotgun. They drop it off in the flat. And not much doing there. Montreal Flowers trying to use his speed. Right, Carlos Colt made a great play. Your middle linebacker stopping a quick screen to the wide receiver. Nebraska has got it geared up early in this game, but that's not unusual, Brent. They start off fast on defense. Now, here comes a matchup. Yeah. Texas has to be very shaky. They have had four blocked punts this year, three of them in the first game by North Carolina State, and the fourth one last week by Texas A&M. Now, Nebraska has blocked seven already this season. They move up front from out of the end zone. Walker is driven back on a beautiful punt back to the 35-yard line. There's an alley, comes across midfield, and down at the 39-yard line. Ryan Long, the punter, 
makes the tackle, but it is a 27-yard return. Time out. I didn't think you saw Carlos Polk. Made, I did. Made, okay, so I, I caught No, him. I didn't. Yeah, it's, it's good. Yeah, I thought that was close to being a clip by Bobby Newcomb. Ooh. Yeah, right there. That's Newcomb right there. No, I think he got his head in front of him. I think he did. The crowd reacted to that. Clip. Yeah, that's pretty close, don't you think? Suspend uh, the crew. Let me see it one more time. It's very, very close. One angle. The crowd did react to it. The Texas crowd did. Ladies and gentlemen, the Big 12 Conference and Dr. Pepper invite you to listen to the University of Texas fan. I think the helmet was in front of him when he hit him on the shoulder. Boy. The, the helmet crosses his shoulder, but it's very close. Was that who was that down on him early? Oh. Bobby, when do you want to use that? You got it. Very good. Here, I'm going to set you up on it. That's fine. Okay. Nebraska, all rushes, four different players. Yes. That's good. That's fine. That's fine. Alexander's back. Got it. Excellent field position here for the second series for the Cornhuskers inside the Texas 40-yard line. Alexander back at Ibach gets the call, busts into the middle for two or three yards. Gary, we've talked about the Texas defensive strategy to wear down the quarterback. And Eric Crouch is susceptible to it. Remember, his rushing attempts are just not the time he carries the ball, but when he pitches it, he's going to get hit. The strategy, not as big as Scott Frost or Tommy Frazier, to wear down the quarterback. That's what Carl Reese is going to try to do for the second half of this football game. He has been hit five times already here in the first quarter. That's Eric Crouch, the Nebraska quarterback. Hit five times by the Horns. Rodgers, incidentally, made that last stop. Now Crouch is going to throw his first pass, and it is complete to Davison. Out of bounds, inside the 30-yard line, Matt Davison makes his first catch. Jack Aroot. Well, Brent, Gary, you're absolutely right about what Carl Bull Reese wants to do on defense, but there's another twist because he's aware that Nebraska has suffered 18 fumbles in the last two games. So in the early going of this game, he has told his defense to not only be concerned about the tackle, in fact, even more importantly, go for the ball. That's a little bit different than what you've talked about in your Dell game solution, right. Gary. Jack, I heard him say that yesterday at practice, but I disagree. You can miss a lot of tackles doing that. Straight ahead by Crouch for the first down for Nebraska. You know, Brent, you become concerned in, in, about forcing turnovers. A lot of times, you just got to play solid defense and let the turnovers, especially fumbles, come to you. Hard hitting and aggressive play will get you your turnovers. In their first meeting six games ago, Solich's Cornhuskers turned it over three times. Texas did not turn it over once. It was a major difference in the game. First down and 10 for the Huskers. Play fake to Alexander. Couch rolls, diving incomplete. He's now one of two. He went to his fullback, Miller. And the Dr. Pepper Big 12 Championship on ABC Sports brought to you by Dr. Pepper and your local Dr. Pepper bottle. Dr. Pepper, this is the taste. Dell Computer, pioneering direct internet ideas for your business. Be direct, Dell. Chili's, a proud sponsor of ABC College Football. And Ford Motor Company, better ideas. Welcome to the Alamo Dome in San Antonio, home of the NBA World Champion San Antonio Spurs. A loser last night against the Detroit Pistons, but they don't lose very often. Second down and 10, and look at this. Nebraska spreads the field. Applegate comes in motion. Crouch straight back. High incomplete. And that was intended for Wilson Thomas, the freshman from Omaha, who has not caught a single pass this year. That's the matchup Nebraska wanted. They worked on it in practice when I was up there, and that is matching Thomas against a smaller defensive back. Brent, look at Sean Applegate come in motion. It was mistimed the snap. Applegate barely gets out. In fact, he doesn't get, get out, and that's where the pattern broke down. Applegate doesn't get into it. Only three guys go out. 
Nebraska has to be discouraged now facing a third and ten when you figure how well they moved it early for Solich, who is the play caller. He's his own offensive coordinator. They got to hurry. They're down to four seconds. Two seconds. Back. Are they going to get it off? No, they're not. And there is a five-yard penalty. Did they get a timeout? Remember, let us go back six weeks ago to Austin. Houston, Nebraska burned all three timeouts in the second half, and they had to come down the stretch in an effort to play catch-up without any timeouts. You're exactly right. Timeout, Nebraska. They did get the 25 it. Clock right Wilson now. Thomas called timeout right in front of the linesman down here. So a freshman uses a timeout, and we'll take one, too. You're right. They used all three last game. That's a very good point. I had that circled. Yep, there it is, right there. Good. No, they wouldn't have got it off. There's no way. The, the flag went. But see, if you go all the way, there's Solich there, so he's the one that was yelling to him to do it. So, okay? Absolutely. There's no question. The bench, bench told him. Right. They were late getting it in. it's past, present, and future athletic and academic champions. Uh, I got to tell you that I do not like their play call. I think those people who are critical of I don't like it at all. Uh, I think he's still setting up his game, trying to get his team to gain some confidence, not drop the ball. Nebraska and Texas fans. Sure not George George Tech. <laughs> Different style, completely. Bank of America. <laughs> of the Big 12 uh, Conference. Two new tight ends they've used. Yeah, use Bowling. John Bowling a lot. I thought it's Bauman. Is it Bauman? I got 84. Isn't it 84? You got 94, right? I thought 84 was. If I have to come, I will. I mean, I do. He went out? He, he took Bobby Mr. Fulton, give me Solich on a comeback after this. I like this shot. Sellout crowd in the Alamo Dome in San Antonio. Well, Frank Solich in his first drive called all runs. Now on this drive with excellent field position, he has two runs and three passes. And they're one for three, and they face another pass situation. Their third down and ten in Applegate comes in behind Crouch. They overload the right side, and they run option left, and Crouch is going to take another lift. Now it's fourth and long. Are they close enough now for Josh Brown? I'll tell you, D.D. Lewis that time, the middle linebacker, when you stop an option play from inside out, that is going to tear up this Nebraska option game, and that's what Texas did so well last time, making plays from behind the option. And they leave Josh Brown with what would be a career long. He will attempt a 42-yard field goal in an effort to put Nebraska on the board first. Remember, they started in Texas territory with this drive. He's long enough and good. A career long. Josh Brown, the freshman out of Foyle, Oklahoma. Makes it three nothing, and we go down to our colleague Jack Aru. Jack. Well, Brent, all kickers like to have funny little quirks. What Josh Brown does when he goes out, especially for a very long kick, he says, "I visualize." No, not anything about making that kick. He goes back to his high school days when he had a game-winning kick of 50 yards. He said it went through the uprights, over the fence, and broke the windshield on a pickup truck. He says, "When I go out there, I just think about that." Jack, if this one had landed outside of the Alamo Dome, he might have hit any of hundreds of pickup trucks, my friend. <laughs> now, remember, Danny Hadenfeld, the punter, handles the kickoff chores for Nebraska. Very strong leg, and Texas will see what they can do about this field position. Back deep, Hodges Mitchell. So we see Hodges Mitchell back deep with Victor Ike. They line up their two best running backs, and Coaches will do that in big games, and this is a big one as far as the Longhorns are concerned. The winner will move to the Tostitos Fiesta Bowl and play probably Tennessee, although Alabama, I'm told, is still somewhat in that mix. Hayden Felt drives into the end zone. Let's see if Hodges comes out. He does not. He'll take a knee and it'll come out. Touchback. 
Well, the annual Army-Navy game. Let's find out what happened. Let's send you now to John Saunders in New York. John. One of those rare times in which the favorite wins that game and by more than was expected. Normally that's an underdog's game, but not today. Here the Longhorns are an eight-point underdog against Nebraska, even though they beat them by four in Austin. Here's Hodges trying to find a seam on the left side, and he could not. Let's take a look at the Dell Game Solutions now when Texas has the ball. Texas has to survive the barrage. Nebraska starts out quick. Most of their damage is done early in the game. And while they're doing it, they got to probe and look for Cabill. Ways to use him later in the game. The Nebraska defense shut down Mitchell. Make Texas one-dimensional. And when a passing situation comes, squeeze the pocket and try to knock down passes at the line of scrimmage for Major Apple. Williams has checked in at right tackle. Second down and long. The Major sacked at the 14-yard line. Lauren Kaiser, the junior from Farwell, Nebraska, makes the stop for the Huskers, and Coach McBride loves that play. Nebraska leads the Big 12 in sacks with 47, now 48, and here's the guy right here, going to beat Raisler, number 72, with an arm under. Major sets up. This is very similar to how the game started last time in Austin. The Nebraska pass rush, a major factor. And a coach is concerned about the performance of Raisler, the senior on that offensive line out of Round Rock, Texas, hoping he can hold up today. Passing down for the major. Third down and 15 from the gun. Going to set the screen against that rush, and Nebraska had jumped all over. Carlos Pope moving over again, shadowing the running back. Did not give Mitchell any breathing room. Grant, take a look at the difference in the Nebraska defense. Major Affleck in the last meeting six weeks ago, 47 yards, 9 for 21, came back in the second half. And watch Machete, look at that. Last week, 17 for 27 in the second half. That's what you have to withstand from Nebraska. Now back to punt again is Ryan Long. Remember, he was forced to make the tackle last time over a rush. Has to get it off in a hurry. One quick hop and out of bounds right near midfield. It will be at the Nebraska 49-yard line, a 36-yard punt. And a reminder that tomorrow on ESPN, Emmett Smith and the Dallas Cowboys look to stay in that playoff picture as they take on the New England Patriots. Then Monday on ABC, it'll be a showdown for first in the NFC Central. Jeff George and the Vikings take on the Buccaneers. Minnesota at Tampa Bay live at 9 Eastern, 6 Pacific on ABC Sports. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers with one of the finest defenses in the NFL. What they did last week against Seattle was absolutely amazing. Danny Alexander now comes back onto the field for the Huskers. Lined up at the i -back. They lead it 3 to nothing. Play fake and a throw on first down. Stands tall, avoids the rush, slips a tackle, forced to run now, and Crouch makes the most of a very ugly situation. That was great creative work by the Nebraska quarterback that time. Well, Aaron Humphrey missed the sack, but he saved a touchdown because no one for Texas covered Matt Davidson on the play. Eric Crouch shows you why he's so difficult to sack. He's not been sacked a lot this year. But Matt Davis came Chris crossing the pattern that time, and no one from Texas followed him. Gained five yards on the scramble. Second down and five. Miller, the fullback. First down, Nebraska. Powerful looking run. Willie Miller has really added another dimension to this Nebraska team. He was partially injured when we saw him last time in Austin. He's coming on and giving the Texas offense. Remember, Brent, I mean, when you think Nebraska offense, I mean, you think about the fullback position. McAvicka did it for so many years in the, in the recent history, and uh, Willie Miller is giving them that inside run. You know, also, Alexander reminds me a bit of a Nebraska fullback. Very powerful 
between the tackles. He does. I mean, he's, he's the type of guy that surprises you sometimes, as big as he is, that he can play tailback as well as he does. Now, Nebraska is dominating this Big 12 championship game here early. They have 74 yards. Texas minus three. First down at 10, and Buckhalter checks into the backfield. Option. Pitch hits the fullback, and Buckhalter catches it and is forced to scramble and can't get back to the original line of scrimmage. But, folks, one of the problems of the option for Nebraska are the pitches, and that one was not good. Well, and that just kind of underlies the problems for Nebraska all year. And as Frank Solis tries to call plays, this is what he's dealing with. This contrast, 23 fumbles first, which is a bad one, and Texas has recovered the most fumbles. Here comes the down-the-line option. This is as simple as you can have, and that's as fortunate as you can have when you bounce it off your own fullback. Now second down and 13. Newcomb in motion. Gonna get it. Crosses the 40-yard line. They need to reach the 31 for a first down. You know, there's so much talk about the pitch. How does a quarterback handle it? How should you pitch? I'm not sure the fans understand it. And Gary Danielson down on the field will give you an idea of how you should pitch. Of course, to be successful, Nebraska in the option is going to have to pitch it. But the mechanics aren't quite understood. A lot of guys think it's this way. Really, it's as simple as watching the thumb. You pitch it and point your thumb right at the target every time. So let's see if Crouch does point his thumb at the target. He's going to come straight back this time, fire over the middle, and that is going to be very close. The spot will determine this first down. John Bowling one of their backup tight ends he just made the catch and the spot will determine just a freshman and that's the spot John Bowling has been taking all game brand for Tracy Wistrom and he is short of the first down he is short and it's going to be fourth down now and about a yard to go Solich talking to his fullback and he'll go for it right now Texas stopped Nebraska three times on fourth down in their last meeting Couple that with three turnovers, that's how you blow a game. Follow the fullback. Solich was talking to him. He'll either carry it or block for it, one way or the other. They ride him. Crouch has got it. Crouch for the first down. Breaks free. They won't catch it. Touchdown, Nebraska. 31 yards. Well, what a gutsy call. Frank, you know everyone in this crowd and Nebraska fans everywhere would have second-guessed that call had they not made it. Eric Crouch shows you why he's the coach's co-offensive player of the year. He's now carried five times for 42 yards. The sophomore from Omaha Millard North High School with the game's first touchdown. Josh Brown with a 42-yard field goal, and he makes it a 10-0 game. Everybody thought Nebraska would run right at the middle of this defense, me included. Here comes the fake to the fullback, and Eric Crouch, watch his feet. Freeze option, coming inside. Watch this, jump to the outside. Can't coach that, can't teach that. That's just athletic ability at the quarterback position and why this Nebraska offense is so tough to stop. Everybody thinks it's simple. It's not simple. And they've got a good running on all cylinders. It's as tough to stop as any offense in the country. But I don't have to remind Nebraska fans or Texas fans that a week ago out in Boulder, Colorado, the Cornhuskers jumped all over Colorado before letting them back into the game in the fourth quarter and then had to hang on to win a failed field goal, giving the Huskers a chance in overtime. They made the most of it. And here in the Dr. Pepper the Big 12 championship game, it is Nebraska dominating the first quarter. They now lead it 10-0. And Hayden felt drills another one into the end zone it'll come out on the 20-yard line let's check in down below with jack Aru. jack 
Well, Brent, Matt Brown and his coaching staff are happy with the performance of the defense. They are very unhappy with the performance of their offensive linemen. They took both Tim Nunez and Matt Brown, talked to the offensive linemen and said, look, there are 11 players out there right now referring to the defense. We can't keep them out there as long as you have. You've got to be able to do more than three and out. He said, you've got to get your position, get the block, and especially protect Major. And we see why, Jack, because it has been two, three downs and out for the Longhorns, unable to get anything going against this Nebraska defense. The Major, short drop, fires complete. So Kwame Cavill makes his first catch of the game. They try to get him working here and a penalty flag Flagged down on the field against Texas that's the preliminary indication snap. False start. On the offense. Five a reminder to tune in Sunday now for the BCS selection show when John Saunders and Terry Bowden will announce which teams will play in the BCS bowl games. They'll be joined live by Florida State head coach Bobby Bowden and Seminole quarterback Chris Winkie and from Blacksburg, Virginia Tech head coach Frank Beamer and the rest of the Virginia Tech Hokies. The Hokies and the Seminoles figure by all accounts to be headed for the Nokia Sugar Bowl and the national championship on January 4th. But Nebraska is saying here in the early going, don't count the ballots just yet. Here's the handoff to Hodges hitting that backfield again. And that was Kyle Vandenbosch, number 83 from Larchwood, Iowa. Let me take you back to an article that appeared six weeks ago in Sports Illustrated. This was a rallying cry for the Nebraska D when I was in Lincoln. They didn't do anything special all day. They're Nebraska. They're good, but they're not complicated. It's not going to be calculus. This was Major Applewhite, who was viewing tapes of the defense prior to the game, and the writer was allowed in. It was a, it was an excellent story, but that <laughs> quote became a rallying cry up in Lincoln. Now the Major throws underneath complete. But only to the original line of scrimmage using the fullback Brown and I asked Major when we reached him in Austin what he actually meant by that quote and here's what he said. They have talent, they have ability on that side of the ball, they have speed, strength, everything. Everything you could want in a defense, they have that. So they don't have to try to confuse you with certain looks. They can just line up on the other side of the ball and say, hey, we're here. You know, let's go play. And then they can beat you. Yeah, you know, he's right. I mean, there's nothing magical about Nebraska. But one thing Charlie McBride has done for this game, no disguise it, move up his linebackers and blitz. He thought last time they were a step away. He wants to get that blitz going. Third and eight coming again. Major steps up, knocked away, incomplete. Ralph Brown, an All-American corner, makes the play at the 35-yard line. A bit of a fade pattern. It's a slant for Juan Nunez. He doesn't come straight as he comes across the field here. Nunez should come flat. He comes a little bit too much upfield, and that allows Brown to get underneath the throw, and that's what allows him to make the knockdown. And it's another three and out. With Long back to punt. Twin return men. Walker from the 31 is drilled in a penalty flag. They say that he did not have the halo, apparently. I wish they'd get rid of that rule, Gary, and make it reasonable like they do in the NFL. And well, not specific. It, it, it's a safety issue, and I can understand it, but it's very difficult for those gunners down there. But understand the problem. Nebraska does not fair catch. They depend on the other deep returner to get it. I think he's... That's six feet. That's also a uh, bad call. I don't know. I think it's very close. I think it's one of those things that they have to watch for. You can hurt somebody, and I think it's a good call. Well, if you see the gunner coming, put your hand up in the air. Well, see, Nebraska uses two returners, and they expect the other one to protect it. Bobby Newcomb missed his block this time and really hung up his returner. Mac Brown is being dominated right now. Needs to rally the horns. They're coming off a tough emotional loss against Texas A&M. And they're unable to move the ball with Buckhalter moving back to that running back spot. You can bet Nebraska's thinking, let's keep the muscle on. 
They do just that into round. Newcomb, and he's can throw it. He's a quarterback looking down the middle. Receiver covered. Now he fires incomplete. Through behind him. Texas ready for that play, and it'll be second down. Great job by Greg Brown that time. The free safety. Greg Brown has been one of the emerging players for Texas, playing so well. And remember, Quentin Jammer was lost to this team early, playing so well, Brett, that I think Jammer might find a spot next year at corner. Yeah, that's what they told me up yeah. in Austin, Gary, that uh, when they need bigger size, they're really thinking about moving him there just because of the performance of this young man, and now Alexander yeah. into the game. Understand how tough that is. Nebraska comes out on first down, running the ball. You want to stop the run, yet you reach your keys and stay back and save a touchdown. Alexander runs into his own man. How about that? You collide with your own guard pulling James Sherman. One of the hardest hits of the day. Yeah, Aaron Humphrey blew up the play that time. Watch Humphrey right here. His penetration is really going to blast that guard right into the backfield. Watch this. Comes inside, knocks him backwards. And that's good defense from that defensive end. Big 12 sack leader making some good plays in this football game so far. Coach Madden, known before as the Mad Dog, the man we call the Sheriff. He'd be proud of that performance <laughs> along the defensive line when you blow somebody up. There is the big fellow right there. If you want to see a weight man, there's the expert. Time running out again. I think they're going to use another timeout. Gary, what's the problem with the Nebraska offense when we see it? Well, you know, Brent, I don't think these timeouts are as critical in the first half as they would be in the second half. But the four receivers, and I'm wondering if Tracy Wistrom's injury is might cause them a little problem in substitutions. Let's go down below to uh, Jack Aru. Jack? Well, well, Brent, take a look. This is what neither of these two teams will be playing for <laughs> this year. But Nebraska has got three of these Sears trophies. And a lot of people, as you know, Gary and Brent, think that maybe this game next year might come into play for this trophy in the year 2000. Yeah, exactly. Uh, well, I Jack, I've got to tell you, Texas would be my preseason number one, regardless of what happens. Their recruiting classes have been phenomenal. They're good at the quarterback position, fine coaching staff. But remember, they don't play Nebraska or Kansas State next year. And one of the critical elements in a drive toward an unbeaten season is the schedule. They open up in Hawaii, and the Big 12 title game will be in Kansas City. Wouldn't that be something if Nebraska <laughs> and Texas come together unbeaten next year? But I'm way ahead of where oh, yeah, we are. Yeah. Well, we let, but you know what, Brent? Uh, they also get A&M at home next year on that schedule. And they only lose two players off of this defense, Aaron Humphrey and Cedric Woodard, the two defensive ends. Everyone else is back. Going to get motion across Third the Third down and 15. Applegate is going to look at this wide split here from the two wide receivers. You're going to get the motion coming across. That's Davison outside. Crouch is three of five for 20 yards. He wants Newcomb coming back on that slick screen, and he is hit right now by DeAndre Lewis, the middle linebacker. So the first quarter will come to an end, and we come back, Nebraska will be punting. The storyline will take you back to the punishment that was being handed out by the Texas Longhorns. Nebraska leads it 10-0 here at the end of the first quarter. But in the early going, they put one lick after another on Crouch. But he had the answer. A 31-yard run for the game's only touchdown. They lead it by 10. Timeout. Cool. Way to go, guys. Good lads. Very good. About tells it. And about to. Yeah, OK. They took Dan Alexander Xander to the off. locker room yeah, just now because he cut his hand, his right hand. So they're going to have to try and work some sort of cover on it. You know, uh, I'll bird dog it, and you you, you know hey, find uh, out what it is. Jack, yeah, you might want to go with this as being a basketball football place, and the seams here are pretty severe, and that's probably where he cut it.
play. Hodgson. Well, Nebraska leads by 10, and I'll tell you how important this is. Hodges Mitchell is back to return a punt. He's already been back to return kickoffs. Had to down two for touchbacks on fourth down. Aiden Fell, one of the best in the nation. And Mitchell, 30. Down at the 34-yard line. So here are our Dr. Pepper first quarter stats, Gary. Well, 10 to nothing is bad, but the stats are worse, if that could be possible. The only thing that Texas has going for them is they've been hitting Crouch. Hopefully, for them at least, that will start to pay off towards the end of the game. Brent, remember, six weeks ago, Nebraska had a 13 to 3 lead at half. That's what Texas is banking on. I think Texas has to go to a short passing game here right now and try to slow down that pass rush by throwing quickly. Jason Lohr into the defensive line for the Huskers. First down and 10. The major changes it at the line. Now Nebraska shows blitz. They back out with Jackson. They'll run the toss to Mitchell. Sprints to the left side. So Greg Davis has seen Coach McBride's defensive strategy. He felt he had room on the pitch to get to the outside. One of the great chess matches, if you will, in college football unfolding here today with McBride down on the field and Davis up in the booth. Davis, a one-time head football coach. He was with Mac Brown at North Carolina. He's a very creative offensive play caller. Mac, on the other hand, very aggressive. Just ask Steve Spurrier the night he blew up the Gators in that national championship game down in Tempe. He now shows blitz again. Second down and short. Polk is picked up beautifully, and Hodges Mitchell explodes to midfield for a first down. Julius Jackson makes the stop. Hodges Mitchell, who started out after three games with only 104 yards rushing, has really emerged this year, Brent, and may be as valuable a player as this Texas offense has for them this year. One of only two backs in the country this year, along with Sean Alexander, to rush for more than 1,200 yards and pass receive for over 300 yards. Kwame Cavill out on this play, and Jamel Thompson checks in. Kwame might be a little frustrated. Only caught one ball. Here's a play fake. Major looking deep. Did it go the Overland route? Incomplete. And that was Thompson out of Dallas's Skyline High School running a deep pattern for the Major who's out of Baton Rouge, Louisiana. I think you're exactly right about Kwame Cavill. That's one of the things you do to a great wide receiver. You have to keep him involved in the game. And sometimes if you're a quarterback, you have to talk to him and say, your time will come. Your time will come. We're still probing. We're still looking for you. We'll get you. Just keep running your routes. He lines up. Apple White only two or six here in the early going for 14 yards. Here's the all-out blitz on the major hot incomplete. Montrell Flowers didn't break it off quickly enough on the all-out blitz. He showed that he's a young receiver that time. He took it too deep because there was fire in the middle and the major had to unload. Well, Ryan Nunez and Montrell Flowers have been trying to replace Wayne McGrady right here. Quick slant right here would have given your quarterback time to throw the ball. Look at that. No one back there in the center of the field. Few too many breaks right there. The ball could have been completed, but that's a tough throw when you're backing up. Texas, 0 for 3 on third down conversions in this game. Third down and 10. Blitz from the outside, picked up by Hodges Mitchell. Apple White goes, Kwame Camille makes the grab. And a nifty one at that for a first down at the 34-yard line. 16 yards, and Cavill showing you why he's one of the best. See, I think this is what you have to do to Nebraska. You have to keep throwing the ball, throwing the ball, and throwing the ball, and ask your running backs to say, just get a piece of them. You don't have to knock them down. Just get a piece of them, and then I'll go to my playmakers on the outside, and Cavill gets his left foot down for a completion. You can frustrate a pass, a, a pass rush by throwing quick. Ball is spotted inside the 35-yard line for Texas. Mike Brown, the strong safety on Cavill here, man-to-man. -man. And Mike covering deep. 
Can the Major get enough time? We're about to find out, but he looks away from him, comes back, and a diving reception by Flowers. 13 more yards and a first down. See, a lot of people think that if you face a tough pass rush, you shouldn't throw. Well, it's just the opposite. You gotta throw with a quicker tempo, wear them out. It's just like the body hits on Aaron Crouch. You can wear out the pass rush with a lot of five-step drops. Cavill was wide open over the middle. Applewhite kind of lost his sight and then went to his second receiver, did a great job. A little smallish quarterback, oftentimes easier to throw wide than over the middle. Jason Lohr was closing in for Nebraska. Play fake on the hit. Here's Jackson on the blitz. Applewhite cannot escape the second man, Vandenbosch. There is a penalty flag on the play. It was Jackson blitzing who blew the play up. Not only that, they're going to get a hold on it, too. Nebraska has had at least one sack in every football game. Last time they played this team, they only had one sack. They're ahead of that pace. Oh, oh, so on the play, the penalty is declined. Mac Brown said his goal for this football game was to get it to the fourth quarter and an opportunity to win it. He said, we know that they storm early in the football game. Second and 18. Carlos Polk has been up in the line of scrimmage as the middle linebacker and then shifting around to make it a little more complicated. Oscars with their bump and run on the corner. And Applewhite pointing at the safety as he pulls out. There is Jackson again. That is the third Nebraska sack. And it has been number 50, Julius Jackson, the senior who grew up in Texas, making back-to-back -back defensive plays for the Huskers. This one's Major Applewhite's fault. You know you've got a little Hodges Mitchell, who goes about 185 pounds, matched up against a big-time pass rusher as a linebacker. You've got to come back and take your five-step drop and get rid of the football. You'll see at the end, there's Hodges Mitchell. That's a tough matchup for him to do. And then... Oh, <laughs> a little bit of a payback for that article right there, I think, in SI. Now, can Applewhite negotiate the offense close enough for a field goal attempt? Here comes Jackson again. Applewhite scrambles with Hulk was on him, and he cannot. Well, that should be intentional grounding. And they may call that intentional grounding yet. In the NFL, all you have to do is get it past the line of scrimmage, but clearly Major Applewhite was just trying to get rid of the ball there that time. So the aggressive defense by Coach McBride pays off. They force Texas out of field goal range, even though they're going to try one. So uh, they're not listening to us. <laughs> and Chris Stockton comes on for a 49-yarder. Remember, he has kicked 150. He's had a couple blocked, however. And Vandenbush, Vandenbush is right there. Vandenbosch, he's a standout at doing this with his size. Is it long enough? No. Ball comes out to the line of scrimmage. Nebraska ball, timeout. I would have punted. I would have punted it, boys. The Big 12 Conference wishes to thank the following corporate. Look where they got to get that ball now. You get this ball out here at the 32-yard line, boys. They get the ball at the 32-yard line of that decision. Where was the TD? Was the TD here? Just asking. Okay. But the number to look at is this one right here. They tried to run up the field. Let's go. You need to find Side, I just wanted to see if they put it to the right side. They did? Okay. Hey, Bobby. Why don't we have our monitor up here for stats? <laughs> 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 Um, to 
does Jack have the, uh, is Alexander back? You see Alexander down there? Jack, is he back? Can I go to Jack? Well, let's get out to Jack Arut for an injury report on Dan Alexander. Well, Brent, they took Dan Alexander off the field back to the locker room about five minutes ago. Now, he has a cut in his palm. Now, Gary, one of the things we're concerned about is maybe it came from the seams on this artificial turf. I think you're right. I think you're right, Jack. Buck calls their checks in on the toss. Out of bounds across the 35 at the 36-yard line of Matt Brooks. Five foot eight inch corner out of Abilene. That's a small man, not a big man. Let's take a look at how Nebraska is attacking this team. The touchdown happened out here, but this is the number. 11 carries up the gut against Rodgers and Hampton. Remember, those are the guys that Nebraska didn't handle that last game. They're going right at them this time. Second down and six. Rayola. All Big 12 center. Gets down in the middle for the Huskers. That's a broken motion. And they run right behind that center with Miller short of the first down. Well, time now for our Aflac trivia question. Who has the longest current winning streak against Nebraska? I'll give you one hint. It is not Texas. We'll be back with the answer a little bit later. Third down and two. Well, last time on short yardage here, Brent, they ran the option. This is a little longer call this time. Mac Brown and Carl Reese has been completely off balance, I think, by the play calling from St. Frank Solich so far in this football game. Timeout has been called, and again, time was running out on the corn Huskers. We'll take a break. Huskers lead it by 10. What now is the timeout situation? The Big 12 Conference For the None, that's it. That's it. Yep. How many different tight ends have they used in this game? I saw 89. Has 89 been out there too? I didn't. Hasbrook. Okay. There's no L. Ladies and gentlemen, we invite you to stay in your seats at halftime. Um, yeah. Brent, Brent yeah. how, how are you doing this? Hockstein. 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 It's S-T-I-N-A. As Stephon O'Hearn from Breckenridge, Colorado, is going to attempt to split the uplines with a chance at $1 million. Yes. The Big 12 Conference and Phillips 66 invites you to listen to the Cornhusker Band as the Alamo Dome cameras search for today's best... And they haven't used the Bates yet, 80, their, their former starter. I know. Yeah, he's been in there. Has he seen oh, the Bates? Oh, yes. Oh, okay, yes. then they've used A five lot. then. A All lot. Right, then they've used five. He's in right now. They've used five. They've used five. <laughs> Pepper Big 12 Championship with Gary Danielson and Jack Arruda. I'm Brett Musburger here at the Alamo Dome. Nebraska leading Texas 10-0. Last night in the Mid-American title game in a wild one, Marshall beats Western Michigan 34-30 on the last play. They don't go for a tie. They throw it into the end zone. Here it's third down and two. Option Crouch keeps it, cuts back, spins free to midfield. Eric Crouch does it again. He scampers 31 yards for a touchdown, and now on third and two, he adds 11 more rushing yards. Same play, different formation this time for Nebraska. Midline option, it's almost an isolation play for the quarterback. You bring that fullback inside, and you really go four on two. Both guards, the center, and your fullback all blocking the two inside guys for Texas. Gary, what did, what did Carl told us? He was he attacked it the first time outside in. He this, did. I, He's trying to do it inside. I think he'd go back, right? I, yeah. <laughs> Crouch is averaging better than eight yards a carry. Rip here, up okay? the game play. Six for 53. <laughs> Coach, that one's not working. First down and 10. Oh, boy. Here comes Buckhalter, and Buck pounds it. 
Still going. This is a very determined Nebraska football team so far. Mott Brooks makes a stop, and it's 19 yards downfield. Yeah, one of the things that really messed up Texas this time, besides good blocking up front, Russ Hochstein's had a great game so far. Hampton gets blocked down. Is the motion coming across the formation, formation was snapped right when he was in a no-man's land, and I think Texas really never reacted to that. But, boy, you are correct, Brett. The offensive line for Nebraska is winning the football game so far. Absolutely dominating the front seven. They were embarrassed. That's Brock. Freshman tight end. Play fake. Juggle, and it is complete. Caught by John Bowling, number 84. And that's Tracy Wistrom's position this time. Wistrom is out, just find another guy. Greg Brown actually does a pretty good job of staying back. The tight end makes a good read. Bowling cuts underneath the safety. See that? That's a read route. If he comes up, you go deep. If he stays back, you cut underneath it. Perfect job by a freshman backup tight end. Big moment for him, 22 yards. He's a freshman from Lincoln, Nebraska. So a hometown product with a big play. He has two catches now for 29 yards. And Crouch brings them to the line. Miller again on the handoff. Rogers, number 73, their outstanding defensive tackle makes the play. Sean Rogers, the leading tackler for losses for the Texas defense with 22 going into the football game. He's an all Big 12 football player. And Brent, he's really turned the corner for his own personal play when he stopped taking plays off. He's playing everyone right now. He's become a force. I don't think there's two better defensive tackles as a pair in college football. Need to make a play here. Bowling returns. He's the motion tight end, the H backer. Crouch going to throw to him again. It's a flutter intercepted. Picked off by Greg Brown. It was a fluttering pass thrown by Crouch. I, did it get tipped? It looked to me like it was tipped by Everett Walls, number two that time. Coming off the corner, Walls is going to be right on this side over here. One of these two guys comes over, and, I'm sorry, this side comes over and gets a piece of it. Watch if it isn't tipped by number two to the right side of your screen. Yes, it is, and that's what really happened on the play. But you know what, Brent? Bobby Newcomb was downfield, and he was an ineligible player on the on the play it should have been penalized so Greg Brown from Baton Rouge hands it off to his buddy Major Applewhite on the turnover <laughs> off the play fake intercepted by Ortiz at the 10-yard line Tony Ortiz they get it right back on a poorly throw pass by Major Applewhite. The quarterback's job when you're throwing the ball over the middle is find the linebackers. There's great reward over the middle, but there's great risk. And if you're a quarterback, you have to find the linebackers when you're throwing a square in. Major Applewhite does not find Tony Ortiz. That's an interception, and those are the ones that really kill you because your wide receiver ran a good route. Quarterback is responsible for linebackers. First down for Crouch and the Huskers from the 11-yard line. The toss play. Buckhalter cuts back to the 9-yard line. Boy, Aaron Humphrey is just getting into the backfield. All he's trying to do is destroy the plays before they get started. Very difficult to block a guy who's all he's trying to do is get in there and cause havoc. Humphrey, the Big 12 sack leader, is coming off like a bandit off of that corner. Greg Davis telling Major where Ortiz was camped out that time. Second down. Buckhalter hit in the backfield, and it is Humphrey again making the stop. Well, it's a little easier when nobody blocks you on that one. That's got to be a missed assignment. Nebraska has played five different tight ends in this football game so far, and that was a bust by the tight end. He's not that good. <laughs> you got to block him. Third down and nine for a first down. They can pick up a first down, but they need to get it inside the one-yard line for that. 
So they load the eye with Applegate. And on the option, Crouch going to try it himself in a late pitch. Puck Halter doesn't get there. Out of bounds at the four-yard line. It's a decision for Solich and his staff. He would seem to be too far away, and yeah. they might settle for the field goal right here. No brainer, I think, this time. Remember last game against Texas, three times they went on fourth down. This would be a great place to fake a field goal, leading by 10 points. You're down very close. If you get it inside the one, you can pick up a first down. Frankie London with some speed is the holder. Brown is the kicker. This would be a great time to fake it and make it. I don't know if it would be a great time to fake it and not make it. <laughs> Never is that. <laughs> They'll play it safe. They kick it. And it's two for two. This one from 21 yards out. And Nebraska builds a 13-point lead. So we have a trade-out on turnovers, if you will. The first one tipped and intercepted by Brown. But then the major gives it right back. Tony Ortiz. Timeout. Nebraska dominating early. Okay. Yeah, we just got an injury report. Accidental spiking on Alexander's hand. Okay. Could you go back to freeze it just when the ball lets go? Is he go back? back a little bit. And a little Is he on the sideline? And just as the ball right there, a little. If you could freeze it. How about uh, one from Mike Brown on N5? Is this a thinking man's defense? That was a big time play that Ortiz makes. Yes, sir. Uh, it, they'll get it back again this half. Let's do it this half when he gets back. Okay? Yeah. Is it still Hodges back? Is that Victor Ike with him? Good, good. This is very good. Pretty much a one-way matchup here so far. Gary. I'll tell you what doesn't look good if you're Texas. Seven hits right there against Major Applewhite early in this football game. Another knee coming out on the 20-yard line. We get word from down below. Dan Alexander stitches in the hand from an accidental spiking is the report from the bench and he may return later in the game. So that is the medical report. I don't know what that means. What does that mean an accidental spiking? Somebody stepped on his hand, I oh, guess. Oh, step. Spike right? with the rubber cleats. With the rubber cleats, got him, huh? I played in a, a dome like this that had basketball and football, and I know those seams have the zippers and can gouge you. A struggling Texas offense. They decide to offset it. This is cost problems for Texas, bringing Carlos Polk right up in the line of scrimmage. Well, they're causing Major to change plays at the yep. line of scrimmage by doing this. And there was movement. And so Coach McBride is causing all kinds of havoc. He is coaxing Applewhite into changing at the line of scrimmage, and it's sometimes difficult for the big fellas up front to sit there over a long period of time. It's only 37 total yards for them. It, it, as bad as it looks for Texas right now, Major Applewhite has to calm his team down. Mac Brown has to calm his team down. And together say, if we just put something on the board, we're right where we were last time we played these guys. Let's just make some first downs, try to take the steam out of this defense, and see where we are at halftime. Craver matched against Pavel. Kwame is off to the right side of the formation. And now Craver tightens up on him. And Major points at the safety, who has moved up almost to a linebacking spot. Here he comes. Brown's coming. Got one-on-one. -on -one. Flowers juggle incomplete. They had what they wanted. The speed man 
matched up one-on-one, -on -one, but remember number 22 for Nebraska, Ralph Brown, simply one of the best cover corners in college football. Here is the first person in Nebraska history since the Second World War to start every game of his freshman season. He was a true freshman out of California starting on that corner. Interesting matchup that Abe Applewhite went at Brown when he had a more advantageous matchup on the other side of the field with Kwame Cavill and Keel Craven. So it is definitely a chess match. All kinds of movement by the black shirts. Now Mike Brown backs back into center field. Major doesn't know where they're coming from. Gets protection, fires slant, and Flowers drops it. Incomplete on the ground. And what? Let's see now, one gonna, official coming over from the other side is going to say he held it, didn't he? I'm not sure if it bounced on the ground or not. I couldn't tell. Looked to me like it hit the turf. Yeah, so definitely uh, we had a chance to talk to Mike Brown, and we asked him, is this Nebraska D a thinking man's defense? That's what's special about this defense is, is that not only are we talented as far as, you know, physical attributes, but... Uh, you know, we have great minds and we're very tough mentally, and I think that's what sets us apart from other defenses that I've been a part of. And he's one of the leaders. He's played big against Texas in the past. Applewhite now is 0 for his last four with that interception. And he comes up in the shotgun, and he has no idea where the safeties are going to be. Now Mike Brown backs off into center field. Bad snap. Applewhite in the end zone. Got it. Touchdown. Nebraska, no. I think so. Out of the back. Yep. They had a shot at it. And it went out of the back for the safety. Applewhite was very smart that time. He batted the ball out of the way. He knew a safety was better than even jumping on the ball at that point on the one-yard line. Applewhite kept his wits about him and knocked the ball away. And it's in the center. You know, Brent, you're exactly right, though. The movement up front is confusing everyone. This time, Anderson's trying to look both ways. The snap is wide. Now watch. See if Applewhite, see him bat the ball? That was a brilliant play by Applewhite to bat it up and then put it out of the end zone. I think Joe Walker had a shot at that. He, he I did. thought it got him on his chest and he didn't wrap it up in the end zone. We'll take another look at it when we get a chance. I think Applewhite hit it into him, I think, is what happened on the play. But boy, oh boy, the rush from both sides, the movement of the safeties and the linebackers, have completely confused. One more look at it. See if Applewhite doesn't bat the ball as it goes past his right shoulder here. See that? Knocks it right up into Brown and out of the end zone. That's exactly what happened. Right very, it. very, it was a very tip. smart Walker play. Walker just could not get it wrapped up in time. And Nebraska settles for the safety, making it 15 nothing there at the Dr. Pepper Big 12 championship game. Two years ago, remember, Nebraska dominated Texas A&M. Coach Dr. Tom Osborne in his last season, nobody knew it at the time when they were in here, but he was well on his way to his last game, not to be in the Orange Bowl against Tennessee. Bobby Newcomb fields the short kickoff. Newcomb with great breakaway speed, accelerates, can they track him down? One man, Newcomb's down. Jeremy Jones, a senior, and Bobby Newcomb. Let's take you back to the week after the tough loss in Austin, the Kansas game, the Jayhawks with a chance to upset the Cornhuskers, and it was number 12, Bobby Newcomb, exploding on a punt return. That the turning point for this Nebraska Cornhusker team. Brent, I think there was a flag down on the play that's going to get it back to the 45, 50 yard line, but Brent, that was the turning point on the field, but there might have been other turning points for this Nebraska team. And one of them was Bobby Newcomb said, I'll volunteer to go to wide receiver. That really solved a lot of problems. Yeah, absolutely. And Eric Crouch moving in under center, Gary, 100% yep. right. Bobby Newcomb talked to Frank Solich yesterday. I kind of said to Frank, I think he's a bit frustrated by not getting big plays. And Frank said, well, you said it, not me. But, you know, when you've made a lot of big plays as a quarterback and a wide receiver, you have to let them unfold and let them happen as a player. And Bobby right now has to be patient. The big plays will happen. Because of the penalty, the ball is brought all the way back to the 46-yard line. Buckhalter still the eye back. Newcomb shows in the round, and they hand off. And that was a play that was very, very successful good. against Texas. 
in that first game back in Austin. They made it work against Colorado, but not this time. Nebraska needs, uh, I mean, they may just run out, and, and if Nebraska and Texas can't find their offense, they're obviously going to win the game. But somehow Nebraska has to account for Aaron Humphrey. They're not even blocking it. And now as Corey Buckholder comes out of the game, that's two tailbacks. Nebraska is down to their third one. Second down and 11. Dylan Diedrich, the eye back. Number 30, Canadian youngster, freshman, fine looking prospect. Wraps up the ball, goes nowhere. Sean Rogers jumps it. Well, remember the Affleck trivia question? Who has the longest current winning streak against Nebraska? Not Texas. No, it is Florida State. The Knowles and Bobby Bowden to beat the four straight times. And Brent, uh, Nebraska might have come from a, a bad fourth quarter against Colorado to maybe play them again and going after that four-game series. Because I think if they would have hung on and kind of just ran away with that game, they might still be playing for it. Third down and 11. Humphrey in on Crouch. Crouch throws it away. Newcomb was in the area. Nebraska is forced to punt. Aaron Humphrey's having a brilliant football game. Just brilliant. He's unblockable from his defensive end position. Remember, started out as a middle linebacker three years ago. He's the Big 12 sack leader, and he is all over the field right now. Number 49 just coming off the corner. Could not be handled by Dave Volk, who got out of his stance late. And Diedrich, the much smaller running back, could not pick him up. Garcia is back deep this time to return this punt. That's close. Garcia slips through near the 25-yard line. The Dr. Pepper Big 12 Championship on ABC brought to you by Dr. Pepper and your local Dr. Pepper bottler. Dr. Pepper, this is the taste. State Farm Insurance, like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Burger King, have it your way. And Chevrolet Trucks, the most dependable, longest-lasting trucks on the road. They're at the line of scrimmage. Major Applewhite brings the offense out. Now it's remembered that Major Applewhite lost 12 pounds. He was that ill last week. And he did not start the Texas A&M game on the toss. This play has worked before to Mitchell. But because of that, Chris Sims, the freshman from Franklin Lakes, New Jersey, started that game against the Aggies. And then he came out in the fourth quarter. And in case Mac Brown feels that uh, health is bothering Apple White at all, he wouldn't hesitate to give Sims some playing time. But right now, obviously, the major with much more experience against a defense like this, this is his football yeah. game. How would you like to be Chris Sims, Texas A&M, everything involved in that football game, and you find out you're going to start after you come in for more minutes. That's a tough choice. Second down and seven. Cavill will try a little motion back toward the line. Kramer loosens up. Mitchell. The short of the 30-yard line, and let's check in with Jack Aru. Jack? Well, Brent, as a result of the performance that Chris Sims made in that A&M game, some of the Internet sites put up on their boards that Chris Sims would transfer in the year 2000. That is not the case. Sims stays, says, I'm staying put, and he draws an analogy to the situation that his father faced against Jeff Hofstadler and the Giants. He said, my family loves competition. I think also, Jack, he told the Dallas Morning News that under no circumstance he was not uh, transferring. Third down for Applewhite. And again, he's trying to track Mike Brown. Good protection. Drops it off to Brown, the fullback, and I believe he stepped out. First down, Texas. That's a good looking play. The quick passing game that time, Major through with rhythm and that's what you have to do when that pass rush starts to come throw with rhythm incomplete passes are better than sacks obviously you've got to start to move that Nebraska defense yourself I'd like to see major do a few quick counts and force Nebraska to show their defense a little bit more watch every time major gets up there he's slow he's looking call a play snap it and force Nebraska to move on you instead of the other way around after that Kramer leaves and gross a young corner, number five, a freshman out of Ohio. The top of your screen checks in for the Cornhuskers. The major, five of 14, backs out. Tough bump and run coverage, and he's got Puel and Kwame. 
with size and everything you need trying to get it going. And a reminder for everybody to tune in tomorrow to the BCS Selection Show where you can join our colleagues, John Saunders and Terry Bowden, and find out the Seminoles at Virginia Tech appear to be headed for that showdown. How about Nebraska if they win this? The Fiesta Bowl, huh? And uh, Wisconsin already headed on into the Rose Bowl to play Stanford. That one's already set. And of course, down at the Orange Bowl, Michigan has accepted a bid to play down there. Craver replaces Gross, and it is first and 10. This, believe it or not, is the most impressive looking drive so far for the Longhorns. They are out to the 47 yard line. They've been dominated throughout the first half. The bill matched against Ralph Brown. One on one goes the other way and incomplete. Threw it up in the air in hopes that Jeremy Jones could do some business against that corner. Texas has decided to throw at Craver, Gary. Uh, Brett, look what's happened in the major right here. After the shift, all of Nebraska, all 11 guys within five yards of the line of scrimmage. Again, Major needs to come and drive the car and let the, instead of the car driving him. Come up, quick count it, and try to force that secondary to show something quicker. Right now, the defensive secondary and linebackers are controlling the game because Major's just off balance trying to do too much. Second down and 10. Got protection, fires, Cabell couldn't hold it. Kwame being as good as he is, should have held on to that one. Something special coming your way at halftime, I guess. Trying to give away a million dollars, that's a staple here of ABC, the Dr. Pepper halftime contested in the Pick Your Kick 99. Steve O'Hearn out of Breckenridge, Colorado. The Breckenridge boot. Will he go for the million? He'll have to kick a 40 yarder if he wants to do that. He goes from 20 yards, 250,000, and from the 10 yard line, 50,000. Cheerful fella. Looks like he got a little sleep last night. Well, Texas would like to have three right now. They don't even have to get 250,000 for it. They just need some points. Being shut out by a touchdown, a field goal, and a safety. Major steps away from trouble. There is a penalty flag. Penalty flag is thrown by our referee, Hal Dowden of the Big 12. The Major Applewhite wanted to go to Kwame Cavill right here. Joe Brown, Joe Walker, excuse me, and Deion Booker, double coverage right there. Third down, bring in those extra defensive backs. Take away the best receiver, that's what you do. Mack is saying, Major, is this complicated enough for you? you or do you it. want me to you show you some it. more? And that's the other big talker for Texas right there. His quote was, they can't mess with us. And he was referring to Nebraska. And as much as Mac Brown tried to warn his players about having to face Nebraska again, still just a little bit seeps out in a football game. Chris Stockton, normally the place kicker, he will try the punting duties. That hangs a beauty up into the air. Walker didn't signal for the fair catch. They don't, they now they're going to throw a penalty yep. flag at that. He had to stand there to make the catch. I just honestly don't like this rule. Well, we disagree, but I, I think you can see the strategy that Nebraska uses. They are not going to fair catch. Well, I just don't. Gary, I think in the NFL, if you interfere with the catch, it's a penalty. But in the college game, they make it so specific that on a punt like that, the official's looking to see if you're a couple of yards away, and it's not fair. I, I understand. Mean, I just think it's more for a safety precaution is why it's in college. Uh, I, I, that, that was one. You can see Nebraska's strategy, though. They'll, they'll sacrifice a hit for, to catch the ball. Struggling against the black shirts here today. First down and ten. Crouch brings the option. Here's the pitch to Buckhalter. And Humphrey again leads the way. Humphrey has been the defensive standout for the Longhorns. Buckhalter limped off back in there, still continues to limp a bit as he goes back to the huddle. Talked about that thumb. Look at that thumb right there. 
pointing exactly where you want it to go. And I, I was a wishbone guy myself, Frank. That's right. <laughs> it wasn't too successful that either, I'll tell you that. <laughs> Second down and seven, like Bo Schimbeckler says, he got to Michigan, he'd have made you an All-American. Exactly right. Here's Crouch again, keeping it, and this time, he's jumped in the middle by tackle Casey Hampton. Tonight, the SEC title and an automatic BCS bid on the line. Running back Sean Alexander and a Crimson Tide of Alabama look to upset the Florida Gators for the second time this year. It's the SEC championship presented by Dr. Pepper in their game earlier this year Bama in overtime 40 39 in the swamp they'll try to do it again tonight what a fine game that figures to be Texas gets a stop they should use a timeout they got all three left play fake crouch too deep don't need it incomplete pass two minutes to go all three timeouts Texas in a position to get back in this football game now Jack Aruda, our emotions still running high, my friend. Well, Brent, they've changed, shifted just a little bit. When you look at the Nebraska sidelines, they are typical old-time Nebraska. Resolute, they broke into a smile when they scored that safety. But over on the Texas sideline, they look a little bit like deers in the headlights. They need to sustain a drive. As you guys said, they've got some timeouts and a two-minute offense in their back pocket. I think that penalty on Bobby Newcomb's return was a huge play in this football game. Texas needs to take advantage of it. Hodges Mitchell slips the first tackler, but not the second. It's a two-yard return, and right now, let's send you to our colleagues in New York, John Saunders and Terry Bowden. John. John and Terry, we look forward to that. DeBose with his hands full against Steve Spurrier tonight. Spurrier has said that Jesse Palmer will start that game at quarterback, but Doug Johnson will play. But the last I heard, DeBose wasn't revealing his quarterback. Nebraska has their linebackers all three in against these four wide receivers. A mismatch somewhere. In the face of a rush over Kwame's head and out of bounds, it'll be second down. You know, we talk a lot about Casey Hampton and Sean Rogers, but Steve Warren, the senior nose tackle for Nebraska, is every bit there equal to Big 12, all Big 12 player, number one sack leader. And I tell you, he has caused problems up the middle all game. Total yards for Texas, 42 and 154 remaining. This initial barrage is lasting a little too long for Texas right now. Second down and 10. Searching. The blitz again. So they drop it off and they can't gain anything as Brandon Healy, wide receiver, makes his first catch of the game. Joe Walker did a nice job on that one on that slip screen. Sellout crowd here in San Antonio. The Alamo Dome, home of the San Antonio Spurs. It is 15-0. Nebraska dominating Texas. We've got a timeout, 137. Ladies and gentlemen, the Alamo Dome is a non What's leaking? We thank you huh? For it's got to be the pipes up fans, there. Sure to sign up for what is the total plays for both sides, Rod? Seems like Texas' defense is doing a fairly good job. Well, they're they're hanging in the, the game. I mean, had that one short yardage play, it cost them. The worst play was the touchdown. Exactly. Right? Get three, 31 yards, you know, which was, uh, that was a fourth down play. Right. It was, they played decent defense. What are you going to do going to commercial, Bobby? What are you going to do going to commercial? Prize winners will be announced in the second half, so sign up now. Oh, we're going to go straight to John. Before we go to John, we're going to show uh, the touchdown. The place to eat, drink, dance, and celebrate after the game. Just a few okay. steps north of the Animal Dome. Sunset Station is your party headquarters.
I hope there's sound. <laughs> Shows you how well the Nebraska defense is playing today. They got to have a good first second half to match those numbers, don't they? Absolutely. <laughs> Third down and 11 now against the major rush outside. Jackson got him by the arm, and that set up the fifth sack of the first half by Aaron Wills, number 81, out of Omaha's Burke High School. Tommy Cavill had Mike Brown, a strong safety on him, man to man, and just didn't get open that time. No trick defenses, no double teams, and Major was left holding the ball. Joe Warren with the deep return man for the Here's Bobby Newcomb way over here. He's the guy that's going to come across and clean it up for the returner on the play. Ryan Long. Nebraska, one of the few teams that keeps two returners back. Low looking for a bounce, and Newcomb showed you why. He protected the sideline and dances to the 40, free at the 30, and finally wrestled out of bounds. But 43 seconds left on the clock, a 26 yard Newcomb return. And wouldn't they now love to have some of those timeouts in their hip pocket? How important it is to keep the extra returner back there. If they only had one, like most of the teams in college football, this would have gone out of bounds and very innocently left Nebraska with too much yards to pick it up. But look at this. Newcomb catches the bad punt and puts the offense in good field position to put on more points. I so love two guys back. There. Coral Buckhalter filling in for the injured Dan Alexander. Willie Miller, the fullback, and Crouch on first down. Fires complete to Davison and out of bounds inside the 20 yard line. Stopping the clock. 39 seconds left. And already in this half, Josh Brown has kicked a 42 yard field goal, his career long. Only one touchdown, and that a fourth down run of 31 yards by Eric Crouch. There also has been a safety in the game. Eric Crouch was a high school run and shoot passing quarterback. Newcomb in the slot to the left. Crouch rolls in that direction. Fires deflected in the complete. And getting in underneath it to deflect it Lee was Jackson. Lee Jackson. Lee Jackson got a strong safety. He's been in there on the option plays. And this time runs underneath the two-man route to the outside. Texas, I think it's absolutely imperative that they hold at least Nebraska to an attempt at a field goal here. the defensive plays for the horns 35 seconds on the clock here's the second down at 10 Crouch in the gun offensive line gives him time and it's broken up beautifully on that corner by Brooks Crouch goes to his go to receiver Matt Davison Number one receiver for Nebraska with only 27 catches coming into the game. Match that up against 95 for Kwame Cavill, but it's a half roll. Crouch comfortable throwing on the run. Without timeouts yeah. and 31 seconds, they're going to need to throw this. A first down would stop the clock for the field goal team, but they've got no way to stop it if they don't get the first down. So they're battling the time right now, and he trips. He's down. Run on your field goal They've got to run him out. Yep. They got time. Run him out, kick a field goal. The st still 20 seconds. This is practiced by every team. The hurry up field goal. London, the holder. He'll put it down for a 38 yard attempt with about eight on the clock. The kick well on its way. Long enough. No good. Off to the side. So Josh Brown misses a field goal, and Texas. Breeze a sigh of relief here with five seconds to go. When you think of all the numbers for Mac Brown, how he's been ganged up by the Nebraska defense and how this game has gone, they are probably feeling pretty good about <laughs> trailing by only 15. Now that sounds like a lot, right. but it could have been much, much worse. Josh Brown thought he made this, but uh, I got to trust that official right underneath the post. The ball's right up here. 
as it drift. And clearly, you draw a straight line up there, that thing is outside I'll wide. Take your, wide. I'll take your word for it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm buying your version. I'm not trying to get any more official suspension. <laughs> I'm not here, Carlos. <laughs> All right, we're going to take a knee. The Dr. Pepper Big 12 championship game. The emotions on both sides of the field. Players and coaches alike. Putting it all on the line. Nebraska leads it 15 0. Halftime. Has caught only two passes. Back with Gary Daniels and I'm Brent Musburger. You had a chance, though, to talk to Greg Davis, the Texas offensive coordinator. Well, first of all, Major Applewhite has caught a few helmets, and that's why Kwame Cavill has only caught two passes. Greg Davis said it's not been so much them fooling us with the pass blitz, it's been us not blocking the front guys up front. He's very disappointed with his offensive line in the first half. Well, we'll see what they can get going here in the second half as they are being shut out now by Coach McBride's defense. And let's take a look at our Dr. Pepper first half stats here, Gary. Well, Nebraska stayed in this football game, first of all, because they've held on to the ball. No fumbles, only one pass interception. And look at those yards. Five sacks in the first half. Remember, the first game, Texas held Nebraska's pass rush to just one sack the whole football game. One of the key members is right here. Danny Haydenfeld, the senior from Des Moines, Iowa, has not given Texas any breathing room on his kickoffs. Mitchell and Ike are back deep, and he drives another one. This one's going to come out. Mitchell stopped right around the 20-yard line, where it will be first down. Let's take a look where Major threw the ball on the field in the first half. Look at nothing deep. That's because of that pass rush. He doesn't have time. A lot of zeros out there. A couple of passes to the sideline quickies. But overall, the game has been dominated by the linebackers who have been a mismatch for the running, running back for Nebraska this time. There's Hodges a Mitchell, big right? injury right here. Mitchell returning that kickoff. Let's check in now with Jack Arut as they scramble to the line. Well, Brent, we'll tell you about Frank Solich. He was not at all happy with the offensive production from his team. He said, we want to go more. We want to score more. He says, look for the option. We'll tell you about what Matt Brown said after this play. Heider on the toss. Checks in from Mitchell out to the 22-yard line. So the freshman out of Houston, Texas, Kenny Heider, a very ballyhooed prospect will now replace Hodges Mitchell. We go back down to Jack All right, so now let's tell you what, what Mac Brown has said. He challenged his team. He said, we've taken their best shot. And he said, he told the team before they came out, the next five minutes while we're on offense, we'll make or break our game today. He's challenged them to put points on the board in this first session in the second half. Victor Ike, now the tailback. Cole for Ike. Speed. Forced out of bounds. If they have found any hole, Texas, it has been around the outside against the right side of McBride's defensive unit here today. That has yielded yardage. Yeah. That's a 20-yard game. And that means Leonard Davis and Roger Raisler, their two best linemen, are doing a good job pinning that blitz. Nebraska blitzed inside that time, suspecting a pass. Good call, getting inside, off tackle with that running play. Split the backs and send Ike in motion. Booker picks him up one-on-one. -on -one. Applewhite will throw short side. Kwame Cavill couldn't quite get to it on the slant. We talked about it earlier. Remember the second half success that Major had last game and Machete had last week when Colorado stunned Nebraska with 283 yards total offense in the fourth quarter of that football game. The last time that Texas had been shut out was halftime of the K-State game. And Hodges Mitchell, that ankle being tended to, second down and 10. play Ike slants inside fumble what a tremendous defensive play by Tony Ortiz who came off his block that time to jump back on the running back the Nebraska defense is blessed with four senior outside linebackers Ortiz Shaw Julius Jackson and Eric Johnson Ortiz number 37 comes right off the block strips it from behind you know Brent you know Jack 
talked about Mac talking about the halftime adjustments. I'm sure one of them he didn't decide upon was losing a new running back in this game. And now it's Kenny Hyder, the freshman. Third down. The villain motion. Lock Brown's got him. Blitz. No time. It was Mike Brown on a safety blitz. That's the sixth sack, Gary. That was just. I mean, that was just like the Alamo right there. They just overran this offensive line this time, right up the gut. The young back, Kenny Heiter, doesn't pick up anyone that time. Very difficult for a young freshman back to be aware of blitz patterns so early in his career. Ryan Long. Puts it toward the sideline, away from Nuka. So they punt across the field on the other side and they don't give Nebraska a chance a 35 yard punt timeout in San Antonio. I know yes, it's Hyder. It is Hyder. I know it's Hyder. Yes it is. Yes. That's the one I know too. <laughs> Any Hyder. Thank you. <laughs> if you think you're a fan, show it. Let everyone know who you attended the Big 12 football championship in San Antonio by wearing official Big 12 merchandise. Our novelty stands are loaded with great quality gear for sports apparel and unique novelties. We've got it all. Shop now for the best selection. I also want to make a point about uh, Nebraska's offense contributing to this fourth quarter collapse about the number of yards they gained in the second half, okay? I got some good stats for that. The one I want to get is T1, where Cavill talks about the Nebraska defensive backfield, okay? And he's not going to play, apparently. Shot of Wistrom and Alexander would be good without two starters now, the whole game, basically. Welcome back to the Dr. Pepper Big 12 Championship. Winner moves on to the Tostitos Fiesta Bowl. Play either Tennessee or Alabama. Buckhalter will go and I back. Alexander's out for the game. On a sweep to the right. Buckhalter to the 41-yard line, running hard. The junior out of Collins, Mississippi. James Sherman that time, one of the pulling guards, senior number 63, came around and just fit one of the linebackers there and did an excellent job. The Nebraska offensive line, Brent, looks much quicker to me on turf than they did in grass when I watched them against them before. They are moving up there. And as a result, Buckholzer with 12 carries for 61 yards. Second down and four. And <laughs> Miller battling for no more than a yard. Jack, what's the uh, prognosis on Hodges Mitchell? Still questionable, Brent. You can see that the athletic trainers are taping him up. It is his right ankle. They say they turn. he turned it over. They're going to retape him, see what kind of weight he can put on his foot, also how he can cut. They'll evaluate him and make their decision after that. Big third down defensively for the Horns. Both times in this situation, Nebraska came with the midline option, where Crouch faked the fullback and kept it. That's right, Buckhalter, first down, first free, breaks loose in a foot race for the end zone. Brooks dives down, four-yard line. Brooks saves a touchdown as Buckhalter changes gears and rolls 55 yards. This has to be the most disheartening play of the game for Texas. An isolation play, you're geared to stop it. Good block by Huckstein that time, number 55. Buckhalter pops out of the other end of it, and it's a sprint to the end zone. When you're a Texas defense that has only given up 99 yards a game, and you can gut it out on third and one for that big of a game, that has to be disheartening. 
Takes off his helmet, a little winded. 13 carries, 116 yards, and Diedrich, the freshman, now lines up at eye back. And here is Diedrich, nothing doing. And the young man from Scarborough, Ontario, is jammed in the middle as Aaron Humphrey makes still another stop with a Longhorn. Darren Diedrich had a pretty good football game. The last time he played was against Kansas State. He carried the ball 14 times for 93 yards, but did not get a carry last week against Colorado. Buckalter returns after taking one play off. Alexander out because of the injured hand. Here was the time you knew Scott Frost or Tommy Frazier would run that option. Instead, it's Eric Crouch running it. Looks for a seam, cuts up, touchdown, Nebraska. That's what makes Nebraska so tough inside the 10-yard line. They play you with 12 guys, 11 guys, excuse me, seems like 12. 11 guys, you get the quarterback involved in the option play, and this time he cuts it up and makes the touchdown. Josh Brown. Adds the extra point. 22 to nothing. Solich and Nebraska lead it. But it was the power run by the junior Iback. Corel Buckhalter. And Buck, as he is known by his teammates, bolts for 55. Timeout. Yep. What, what yard line did Crouch go in front of? Let me see it what one yard time. line was Crouch on. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, I can do something. I'll freeze it about halfway through it, okay? Bob, do we have the uh, Kwame Cavill? That's a good picture. Yep. That's no small time cut. No, I guess not. Right? So that's, that's no. It has to be in a. It has to be in a dangerous place. You got that tape? He showed him where it would cut. You see Frankie London kind of get squeamish when he told him. Deep receiving for Texas. Dan Alexander out for the game, and folks, that is not a small time cut on the right hand. That is heavily bandaged down there. Injured in the first half. Buckholder picks up the slack. Will be the key return man. They bounce it, and it's Jeremy Jones picking it up. Now, speaking of injured players, before the game, Nebraska lost Tracy Wistrom. Let's go down to Jack. Now, Tracy's been doing a lot of coaching on the sidelines. What have you been telling your, your counterparts? Uh, you know, this is a tough time for me right now. I've just been trying to come out here and give a little encouragement, a little advice where I can. What about the mood in the locker room? This Nebraska team's really resolute on trying to take it to the woodshed with Texas. Yeah, at halftime, we just kind of said, you know, this game's definitely not over. We only have a 15-point lead. We just need to come out and play well like we did the first half. Brent? Thank you, Jack. And Hodges Mitchell trots back onto the field to try it. First down at 10, that is Hodges in motion. Injured ankle taped on the sideline. 
major on a slant. Nunez makes a good catch. Wow. He was not on target with that pass, and Nunez bailed him out. That's Nunez's first reception. He came into the game with turf toe. Here's our Applebee's game pack. You know, the last time, folks, Texas played a team twice the same season was back in 1918. That was against the Penn Radio School. The last time Nebraska played a team twice the same season was 78 against Oklahoma. You left wondering if Coach Snyder up in Manhattan wouldn't like to put the Penn Radio School on there. No, just oh, kidding. My, just my, kidding. My. I just do have to kidding. say that that phone probably is ringing to Brent Musburg to find out <laughs> if they can schedule them all across the country, right? <laughs> oh, oh, I'm going to hear about that. <laughs> well, Mac Brown's in a hole now by 22 points, Gary. You know, that last catch by Nunez that time, that was a one-handed catch on a slant pass. As you look at Major Appleway, what a day it has been. He lost 12 pounds this last week and didn't play the first half. And this week, he keeps getting hit like this. He may lose more than just weight. So, you know, out of one, excuse Eric, excuse me, Charlie McBride was very upset with himself last time against Texas. He said, we tried to disguise too much. We were too far off when we blitzed. We need to move up and attack the quarterback. That has been, in simple terms, the game plan for Nebraska. Move up and come. It's like the, the blitz of all time. Kwame Cavill being limited to two receptions. Short and the fullback Brown, who rarely carries the ball. Oh, he kept it. Major and kept it. A major with a great fake that time. We don't usually get that from Major. We usually find Eric Crouch with the slick ball handling. <laughs> but that time, whoa, did he fool me that time? I'm, I'm not sure if he didn't miss the handoff on the play, Brad. They just kept it because he did not want to risk a bad handoff because second in inches to run this kind of play, you can see he did. He was not sure of the handoff. I don't think this was a called play at all. I think this was just major keeping the ball. And sometimes, as you know, that is a great play for a quarterback. Sure. They will call that, and then they'll keep it and come around in because it is sold so well by the fullback. Now he can start to think about the ball and loosen things up a little bit. Kwame is off to the right in the slot. They've been playing bump and run. Looking short side, incomplete, a misread. Nunez broke it off toward the sideline. But you know, we asked Kwame Cavill when we were up in Austin to evaluate Nebraska's defensive backfield. They have great athletes, and I just remember them being up in, the, up in my face and really trying to get a jam on you and try to disrupt your route and try to, try to um, disrupt the timing of the quarterback and the receiver. And you know, Gary, they have stayed in his face all game long. Look at Craver waiting for him now to come to the outside. I think you got to throw the slant to him quick with a quick out. One-on-one, -on -one. make it a one-on-one -on -one game. That's what Nebraska is, so throw him the ball. Right in his face. And Mitchell is stuffed at the 40-yard line by big Steve Warren, the senior from Springfield, Missouri. There's big old Steve, his family, his dad over on his sideline watching him. Steve Warren had such an outstanding game last week in the high altitude in Colorado. He played every play and had a bit of the flu in that game and finished it off. He's a quality, quality football player. So Pops is watching. His son has the best voice on the Nebraska football <laughs> team. And I was told today that he will sing the national anthem prior to a Nebraska basketball game this year. So big Steve Warren down there in the pit. He's a good one. Third and 14. There he is right there, right on the nose all day for Matt Anderson. Major slips the pressure but cannot get enough time. Lauren Kaiser, and that is the seventh sack of the game. You know, Seven is, sacks. Yeah, this is beginning to remind Texas fans of that Kansas State game when Texas just was overwhelmed by a Kansas State pass rush. Major Applewhite that game threw three interceptions and had three fumbles, and that was probably the lowest point of the Texas season. Walker back deep, you know, Newcomb will be off to his right. And let's see if Ryan Long aims this one at the left sideline again. That's what he did the last time out. Nope, he'll send this one right at Newcomb. Newcomb's got it at the 29. Out to the 39-yard line. So that's an 11-yard return. So it has been seven sacks by the Black Shirts. Nebraska right now pitching a shutout in the Dr. Pepper Big 12 championship game. Timeout.
Professor from Pasadena, Texas. Congratulations, you've just won an Astro computer courtesy of Gateway. Please report to the registration table outside section 140 okay. to claim your prize. All right, right here. Okay, watch what happens here. Okay, let it, see, he, he switches off on somebody that's not his man, and that's the thing. You can still sign up for your Big 12 commemorative fan card on the sign-up tables located throughout the stadium. Tables will be open. start to give up sacks, they try to do too much. Antoine Kirk Hughes has the man over him. You can see Hodges Mitchell has the linebacker. Well, watch that, what happens. Kirk Hughes tries to do too much, switches off, and takes Hodges Mitchell's man. That's a, mis a mental mistake that costs Texas. Buck Walter, Humphrey, and friends. It'll be second down. Reminded that the Dr. Pepper Big 12 Championship on ABC is brought to you by Dr. Pepper and your local Dr. Pepper bottler. Dr. Pepper, this is the taste. Morgan Stanley, Dean Witter, we measure success one investor at a time. Bud Light, for the great taste that won't fill you up and never let you down. Make it a Bud Light. And the new Impala by Chevrolet. Let's go for a drive. And it is Nebraska on cruise control, leading 22-0. Both touchdowns have been scored by the quarterback, Eric Crouch, from 31 yards and four yards out. Texas defense. Run right up the gut out. Here's Crouch coming in. Hawk tied by Cedric Woodard. Third down and long for the Huskers. You know, against this Texas defense, Carl Reese upstairs, only three running backs have rushed for more than 100 yards, but two of them are from Nebraska. When he beat Nebraska that first time out, Danny Alexander. Alexander rushed for more than 100. Here it has been Buckhalter and, of course, Jamar Toombs of Texas A&M last week, the only three. Remember Nebraska, punt it or move it. No fumbles, no turnovers. You got control of the game. Middle, high, incomplete. Now they'll punt. Two Texas secondary guys ran into each other on the crossing route. That's exactly how the play is designed. Tight end and Matt Davis and crisscross, and the two defenders run right in into each other. Not a bad play for Nebraska, up 22 to nothing to punt the football. Hayden felt averaging better than 40 yards a punt in this title game. He has been one of the weapons. Yeah, and, and we're ready for Brett and I to get into our argument here again over this <laughs> <laughs> halo deal. It's like a flat tax or whatever. We're just going to keep going. No flag from the 25-yard <laughs> line. No controversy. Out to the 35-yard line. Oh, I want to remind everybody that tonight, the SEC title, they're on the line. Brad Nessler, Bob Greasy will be on hand. From Atlanta, you'll see Sean Alexander, fine running back with Bama. Can they beat Florida twice in the same season? Well, it'll be the SEC championship presented by Dr. Pepper, live at 8 Eastern on ABC tonight. That should be a dandy. Let's see if Texas's offensive line gets out of that siege mentality that they're in right now and trying to do too much. Just find your guy, block him, and let the back worry about the linebackers. Hyder. And that tailback. His play. A couple of yards and tackled by Tony Ortiz out of New York City, out of the Bronx area. He went to high school up in Connecticut, up in the Waterbury area. Well, you know Nebraska's looking up at that clock now. 22 to nothing. 
five and a half minutes to go here in the third quarter and thinking about last week against Colorado when they were up 27 to three in the same situation and blew a football game and possibly a shot at a national championship. Toss. And running hard into the arms of Mike Brown and that's the future Hyder, and he brings it pretty good you'll be hearing a lot about this young man. That's a first down and he ran hard that time. Well this is not going to be a nice quarterback comparison as we look at Major White Eric Crouch the hits I keep looking at these hits 15 hits you expect that from Eric Crouch because he's running the ball like a running back. You don't want that with a passing team at quarterback. Hyder again. No gain that time. Ortiz back on the field makes still another play. He's been a standout for Coach McBride today. Yeah, Charlie McBride, you know, as you watch this Nebraska defense, you can understand why people like Tom Osborne and Charlie McBride has called this version of the Nebraska defense the best they've ever seen. Charlie McBride last week said it's the best I've ever coached. That's quite a, quite a mouthful right there. And you get the feeling that more than anything else right now, they want a shutout against the major in Texas. They right. have felt the sting three straight times, and you just get the feeling they're saying enough is enough. Right. Victor Eichel check in. Here's Carlos Polk right here in the line of scrimmage. That has caused problems all day. Napa White hit on the release. Got him complete. Camille with a cushion that time. Inside the 25 yard line, Kwame Cavill for 29 yards. You have to admire a call like this, a post quarter into this type of a situation with the blitz. It takes a long time, and that's why Applewhite took one right under the chin that time when he let it go. Here comes the rush, sets up, and from the outside, you'll see it right under the chin from Kelsey that time. Oh, I guess it was the underarm instead of the chin. They hurt the same. Trailing by 22. Texas needing points. Move the pocket to the right. Uh -oh. An interception, a bad pass. Ralph Brown looking back deep on the sideline. Picks it off. The major. And Brown tackles Ralph. Trying to get a little pick to the outside right here. They're going to rub off Cavill with a pick action. And Major thought Cavill was going to go deep on him. Mental mistake by Major. Look at, there's the pick. Kwame wanted it right there. Kwame gives up on the play. Major hopes that Cavill will go deep. And Brown was the one who read it. That's a mistake by your quarterback. You cannot afford a turnover in that situation down 22 points. So the Major has thrown two very bad interceptions here today. Buck Alter. Humphrey forces him inside, but he finds a seam and powers for the 49-yard line before Lee Jackson makes the tackle. I'm very impressed today, and I guess it's easy to say that. The Nebraska offensive line, look at the depth that the guard and tackle get as they pull around. That's the type of pulling ability that I haven't seen from Nebraska all year. It looks to me like this AstroTurf has gotten a little more quickness for their team, and they're much more comfortable running their offense on this turf than they were on the grass. During the week, Solich moved the offense inside to practice on the carpet. The defense was outside when we were in Lincoln on Wednesday. Option look. Crouch to the 39-yard line, and now huge chunks, 12 more. Brent, that's what the beauty of the Nebraska offense is right here. It looks like an option. It kind of quacks like an option, but it's not an option. You know, I mean, it's it's an isolation play for the quarterback, and if you're Texas, you're thinking option look, option look. He faked it to the fullback, but this is an isolation play with the tailback coming in and helping, the, helping Eric Crouch get inside a brilliant call. First down inside the 40-yard line. Buckhalter. And it takes three Texas defenders to bring him down. Jack Aroot. Well, Brent, remember when they had the offense for Nebraska inside on that rug?
they also pumped in crowd noise. Why? Because in an indoor arena, it just reverberates. It's got no place to go. So Frank Solich and the rest of the coaching staff figured they'd better get their offense used to the loudness of the Alamo Dome. Now, even though this is supposed to be a neutral site, Jack, you're right. This is played by Frank Solich this week as a road game because of the close proximity to Austin. Nebraska averaging almost six yards a rush. Crouch again. A line to the 38-yard line. Now, that is the kind of dangerous pitch that he made last week against Colorado and even in an earlier game against Texas. He wisely held on to it. We'll remind you that we'll select a Chevrolet player of the game from each team. Chevrolet will make a $1,000 contribution. Deach University's General Scholarship Fund at the beginning of this year. Chevrolet also donates two $1,000 high school scholarships. You know, Brent, in the option, there's good decisions, there are bad decisions, but the worst decision is indecision. And that time, Eric Crouch kept the ball very wisely. Third down. Crouch, short of the first Man, down. He is getting rocked. You have to admire Eric Crouch. I mean, this guy isn't six foot 205. He's not the size of Scott Frost or Tommy Frazier. To play in the Big 12 Conference and take the hits he does and play the way he does, I mean, I, he has all my admiration. You know, Scott Frost in the 97 championship team led that team in rushing attempts. Scott Frost came into this game only 19 attempts behind Frost from that 97 team. Hayden Felt in population. He carries the ball a lot. Hayden Felt. He'll try to bury Texas inside the 20. Nebraska. And it took actually a Texas bounce. The Husker players did not see it up in the ceiling here. They might have been able to uh, catch it. So we're at the Dr. Pepper. Big 12 championship game with Jack Root, Gary Danielson. I'm Brent Musburger. 57 seconds remain in the third quarter. And Nebraska behind a savage hard hitting defense dominating 22 to nothing. They have scored two touchdowns kicked two field goals and a safety. And Turner Gill the quarterback coach over on the sidelines. I believe his one loss record was 28 and two when he ran the attack for the Cornhuskers. Hyder back in as the Texas running back. Gets the call, nothing doing, down at the 10-yard line, and he loses three yards. Well, tomorrow, the ISU Grand Prix of figure skating continues, and the men's world silver medalist, Evgeny Plushenko, looks to take the lead in the third of six Grand Prix series events. He battles the world's elite as the road to gold continues at the Nations Cup tomorrow at 4 Eastern, right here on ABC Sports. Last week, the Nebraska defense tired a bit. Charlie McBride has put his backup linebackers in the game. Jamie Burrow made that tackle, subbing for Carlos Polk. I think it's good strategy here to end off this quarter. Applewhite, complete to Ike, who slipped out of the backfield. That's Victor Ike. 18 yards on the play. 10 seconds remaining in the quarter. idea that Texas is waiting for the fourth quarter to come from behind do you <laughs> <laughs> flowers to build out wide Apple one. bad pass Ralph Brown well, almost picked it off on the sideline as flowers broke the pattern off well, so we've yeah. seen miscommunication here between receiver and quarterback several times. Can't blame that one. I've caught the last couple interceptions on Major, and he's made a couple mistakes, obviously, but that one was on Montreal Flowers. It was a hitch and go, and you depend on your receiver to continue the route, even if you're going to be covered, because you got to have somebody back there to knock it down. Greg Davis's quarterback is 10 of 26 for 114 yards, but two very costly interceptions with the final seconds ticking away and Hyder in that backfield. Second down, they run against it with Hyder. 
drive to the 36 yard line in the third quarter comes to an end. So Nebraska being led by Eric Crouches two touchdowns leading by 22 points over Mac Brown and the Texas Longhorns. It was Buckhalter for 55 yards. He now has 138 yards on the day. And Applewhite being hounded back with the fourth quarter after this message and a word from our ABC stations. <laughs> I like the punt. <laughs> We're ready to have an argument. <laughs> Black him up front. On here, they're gonna they're gonna play it safe. Nebraska will play it safe. <laughs> okay. the yard marker over there. What's the yard marker? Doing? One quarter to go. One eye back to another. Third and inches here, Brent, and Nebraska, I think, will play very conservatively in a secondary and give up, concede the first down here. They do not want a big play. That's exactly what they're doing. Deep safety. Brown up over the top for the first down. Our Dr. Pepper third quarter stats here of our Dr. Pepper Big 12 championship game look like this. Well, you don't have to be an expert to look at that one and see a football game that has been dominated by a defense from Nebraska. And those rush yards have to be a huge disappointment to this Texas defense. 234 yards and the bulk of them right up the gut, mashing right up against those two tackles. Here's a fellow who's proud of this defense. Dewan Gross, the freshman, back on the field, the defensive backfield. He's number five, and they're going to put him on Cavill. They're going to match it nose to nose there in the slot. The major, a bad pass. I mean, that's into the nickel seats. You, you care away. to tell me the receiver broke that pattern off? Had to throw it away that time. Tommy Cavill was covered. Nobody to throw to a two man route. Texas only sent out two players. Nothing to do. Either throw it away or take a sack. Look at this coverage right here. I don't know if Kwame Cavill is a, a bit dinged or what, but he comes out, tries to turn up, and then just again gives up on the play. That's good coverage. Kwame out to the left side of the formation, and the freshman going with him again. Here's Victor Ike for a couple of yards. 
Let's follow up on our Dell Game Solutions here. We said Texas had to survive the barrage. Well, it's still going on, so that didn't work. Probe for Cavill, they've never found him. That didn't work. Have they shut down Mitchell? Yes. And are they squeezing that pocket? They're doing more than squeezing. They're popping the great back there. Seven sacks in the game. It's been all Nebraska. Hey, I, I thought something's wrong with Cavill right there. To give up on an out and up like that, that's uh, very, very strange. Jeremy Jones, Jamel Thompson. The wideouts on third down. And against the blitz, short of the first down. Using the running back as a safety valve and Victor Wright out of bounds on the far side. This is a tremendous defensive performance here by the Black Shirts and Cavill be intended to on the Texas sideline. Well, and Mac Brown said it coming into this football game. We beat them and kept them from an opportunity of playing for the national championship. There's no doubt about it. Craver back deep to return the punt for Nebraska. Good Texas roll. Stopped inside the five yard line at about the one yard line. It'll come back out though and hit a Texas player about to the 20 yard line. Yeah, we'll take a break as they sort it out on the field. Right at the 22. 22. Give me coming back a generic shot. I want a, just a little obit here about the father of uh, Kevin Weiberg, the Big 12 commissioner. And I'm pronouncing it correctly, right? Boys, Weiberg. Yeah, it hit a Texas player. That's fine. Yep, that's fine. Ball goes back to the top. You can handle it. Yeah, okay. How many? Let me see it. Let me see it. This can't be. moment at this Dr. Pepper Big 12 championship. All of us here at ABC Sports want to pass along our condolences to the family of the Big 12 commissioner Kevin Weiberg. Weiberg's father died Friday up in Anthony, Kansas. And Kevin, our thoughts are with you and the rest of the family here today. 13-34 left Nebraska football. They lead it 22-0. Diedrich, the freshman running back. Bumble picked up by the horns. Touchdown! Amal Brooks! for the Longhorns. My, my, you have to believe Nebraska's now going to look up at that clock and say, oh, no, not again. The fourth quarter starts, and all of a sudden, a turnover puts Texas back in the football game. Deidre gets an inside counterplay. He's going to try to cut back on it. Hit inside by Casey Hampton. Then I think it's Aaron Brooks that pops it out with his left hand, scooped up, and wow. I'm very surprised that Texas is going to go for two here. I think seven is the call. I disagree with you. Yep, I, I think, think it, down, down uh, by 22, you start going for two early. I don't. But maybe they're <laughs> going to change their mind. Not me. They're going to talk about it. So let us take a break. Now hold 
it. I, you know, we got to do this. I, we got to do a football this. game. Yeah, we got to okay? do uh, Yeah, I just want to see it. That's not. It. It. Uh, Is Rodgers on the fly to that defensive line since Hampton forced that turnover okay now we've got a first document what they're going to do here two or one he's down by 22 points and he wants to go early rather than have it come down to the last one that's fine well he was 22 when he got in oh, I see. <laughs> if he misses he gives himself an opportunity later Leave me some room. Also. Gary, my point is go now, and you've still got some breathing Man. room if you miss here. My thought is hold serve, make it a two touchdown game, and keep the pressure on Nebraska. Don't let them have a momentum change. Cavill is in the slot, comes in motion behind Applewhite. This for the two point conversion. Dropped by the fullback. 22 6. Like I said, Gary, you were right all along. No, Why didn't they kick? No, I mean, I'm we, we discussed I, it through the whole of the no, commercial. I, 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 there's two I ways. I think to they look. did the right thing. And oh, by the right. way, he needs to execute. All he has to do is hold on to the football, and it's two more points. Well, it's less than 50 percent to pick up a two-point conversion, and I think if you look towards the long run of this game, I'd rather have it be 22-14 at some point and put the pressure back on this Nebraska team. I say it was up to the fullback to catch the football and step on into the end zone. Anyway, it is 22 <laughs> to 6 with 13 26, and suddenly we got a football it's, game because of the strength of this Texas team. Isn't the it? defensive line has been abused all game long, and they finally come up with a big play. A lot of pride down there in that defensive front for Texas. And it has been a fumble again. The nemesis for Nebraska all year that cropped up and put Nebraska back in a football game. Um, excuse me, Texas back in this football game. Nebraska has to be a bit nervous. Walker from the four. Breaks free. Texas attempting to tackle the football, could not knock it away from Walker, and he makes his way out beyond the 30-yard line. And the one thing now that Crouch and the Cornhuskers have to avoid is a fumble. They have led the nation in that category, and it has plagued them all along. With 13-15 to go now, protecting the football against this defensive line is critical. Well, and one of the things you have to do if you're an offense is you have to go out there, and Frank Solich has been very adamant about this. We do not coach negatively. He says, I do not stress anything about negative about fumbles. I teach it positively. Carry it high and tight and get yards. I think that's the way to approach it. Hampton and Rogers down in the middle. Buckhalter the eye back. Buckhalter takes them on. <laughs> Nothing doing there. And I had a chance to ask Sean Rogers the other day at Austin, how much pride is there along the defensive line for Texas? With Coach Reese coming and Coach Brown coming, we've made a dramatic transformation in attitude and in performance. And, and that's just instilled a lot of pride in us. And that's something we want to keep pushing for for years to come, even when I'm gone. Back there in the middle, they've been pounded all day, but they come up with a big turnover. Now it is second down and long for Crouch and the Huskers. Play fake. Blitz Brooks after him. Crouch is down at the 21 yard line on the blitz. That's the first sack of the game. It'll go to Aaron Humphrey. 
As Carl makes the call up in the box for Texas, and now they're starting to bring a little heat. Ahmad Brooks coming off one side. Aaron Humphrey, here's Brooks right here. He's going to come off. Aaron Humphrey has been unblockable all game. You see him this time matched up against Willie Miller. And then Buckhalter tries to get him and runs right in. But Brooks forced him to Humphrey that time. Third and 20 for Nebraska. Not something Nebraska likes to do. They're not comfortable in these situations. Rouch runs into the blocker. It's blowing up again. Three and out. One play. Isn't it amazing when you watch football how one play can turn things around and that forced fumble for a touchdown has changed the mood of this football game all of a sudden. And now Texas will have another opportunity. Looking at the scoreboard score now here, 22 to 6 means Texas will have to score two more touchdowns and make both two-point plays the top to win this game. Garcia back deep. They come after him, and Hayden felt one of the best. Wow. Garcia from the 27, surrounded. It's a 53-yard punt with a seven-yard return. But can the Texas offense move the ball against the Black Shirts? Timeout. I mean, the one now is Mike Brown. What appeals to you about the physical side of the football when they come up with a play? Well, Ed Sean Rod, Casey Hampton, a great football player. Boy, they do just great play. Cabell's a story early here, how he is and his health, okay? Yes. Let's use it. Let's go with it. They're coming out here. They've got a, it's, you know, he's pretty calm in the sound bite. This is good right here, too. Tell you what, I'd go with Hyder too. He's a good little football player. On the sideline. Had a slightly, slightly uh, twisted knee. They put a rubber brace on it. He's good to go. Cavill will watch first down. Jack Arut just told us, though, it is a sprained knee. They have rewrapped it, and he's good to go. The helmet is on on the sideline, but on first down, the Longhorns elect to go with Heider, the freshman, as their running back. Jones and Flowers. They're going to try to stretch it with Flowers. Applewhite. Going to come back deep. The bump by Craver. No penalty flag. Great coverage. Great coverage by Keo Craver. Before the last meeting, he said, I hope Texas goes right at me. Texas did. Look at this technique. Read the fade down. Watch him cut in front of him. Cut in front and look back. Perfect technique. When you're in phase on one of those plays, you can cut him off almost like a car on a racetrack. Shows you, Gary, how important speed is in the defensive back. He was just a little quicker. And once you get in front of him, there's nothing that guy can do, no matter how fast he is. Now Cavill back in the game. Here now he'll try him second down. Here comes the blitz. Major knows it's coming. Ortiz moves into a gap. Only four seconds. Three, two, got it off. Heiter, the Good. freshman, runs against it. Let's go down now to Jack Aru, Jack. Well, Brent, the emotion, the tide of it is twisted and turned now to go over to the Texas side. The one thing that the defense said to the offense on the exchange, hey, it's our turn. Humphrey watching 
third down here third down and five they need five yards the bill is going to trot out to the right and flowers with Eric Crouch watching for the Nebraska sideline. He's got flowers one on one but it's against Rob Brown major slips stands back up on the break throws incomplete and the slip threw off his timing completely. Well, Ralph Brown did an excellent job on that out route that time. Again, Kwame Cavill continues to be a decoy. Match up against Flowers. Look at Brown guess. Brown is guessing, gets his head around, but you're right. Tripping, I think he tripped over the guard here. Did he step on his foot? Yes, that's exactly what happened. Antoine Kirk Hughes and Major's very fortunate that he was able to stay up to throw the ball. So again, the Nebraska defense does its job. Texas punts it away. Don't understand why they kick to the left. They should kick to the right. Out of bounds. Right near the 30-yard line. So we'll take a timeout. That makes so sense. The they put Bobby Newcomb up there to kick the other way. The Big 12 Conference wishes to thank the following corporate partners for their support of Big 12 championships throughout the year. Doc Stepper is the proud sponsor and official soul friend of the Big 12 Conference. And his past president and future and Six weeks ago, the major in Texas outscored Nebraska 21 to 7 in the second half. Here today, it is 7 all in the second half. I should say 7 6. Remember, they went for two and failed, so it's a 22 6 count now at the 10 minute mark. And Crouch steps out to the 31 yard line. A reminder the Dr. Pepper Big 12 Championship on ABC brought to you by Dr. Pepper and your local Dr. Pepper bottler. Dr. Pepper, this is the taste. Valvoline, you can always tell the guys who use Valvoline. Ameritrade, believe in yourself. And Chrysler, giving you back the romance of driving. Well, St. Frank Solich in the second half playing the clock a bit. 17 rushes, only one pass attempt, and that was after last week only throwing three passes in the second half against Colorado. He's showing a little bit of everything offensively. Now just trying to bring the clock down. Crouch swarmed all over at the 30-yard line. Rogers, Hampton, Woodard were there, and you know we had a chance to ask Frank, what is the personality of this Nebraska offense? I'd like to think uh, that we have the whole package, that, that we can run the football, uh, we can get you with some play action uh, passes, um, and if we have to drop back and throw, we got the quarterback and the kind of receivers uh, that are able to, uh, to get that done. They need it right now, Gary, third down and nine. They do, and when you're an option team, you gotta run the option, but in this situation, I don't believe a punt's a bad thing. Late pitch. Four. Buckhalter Aaron Humphrey. down at the 29-yard line, and Humphrey was there, wasn't yes, he? Yes, he was. He was in the backfield again, and Eric Crouch, that was the most dangerous play Crouch has attempted all game. 
Watch it coming right at you right here. Number 49 gets inside, crashes inside, runs right through the block by David Volk and gets in there. And that was a bit of a gamble. Good catch by Buckholter that time to save the play. Humphrey with a big one. Absolute monster. Hayden felt again. Under pressure. What a punt. Fair catch by Garcia inside the 25 yard line. Let's send you to New York and John Saunders. John. Yeah, John, Kenny Kelly better make up uh, his decision on what he wants to do. Dorsey playing awfully well for the Canes down the stretch, and uh, you can see how Nebraska has stifled this Texas offense. Seven and a half minutes to go. Texas has to now get a sense of urgency about them getting in and out of the huddle. They can't play it slow anymore. They need two scores. Hyder. And just the threat of the blitz is throwing off the timing. Jack. Brent, absolutely one of the keys this week has been, th today, has been the, the play of the black shirts for Nebraska. The defense is good. How good will defensive coordinator Charlie McBride says that it is absolutely the best defense he has ever coached. He ought to know he's been doing this for 18 years as defensive coordinator at Nebraska. Second down and 10. Cavill is out to the left. And they got to throw the ball to Cavill. It's one on one coverage. He's your best player. Hyder fumbles. Nebraska signals that they've got it, and they do. Vandenbosch. A self inflicted wound by Nebraska right here. They've had three of them two by Major. And now one by Kenny Hyder. Two interceptions with this bubble right here on the pitch. Self-inflicted by the corner. Huskers defense oh, forcing yeah. it as yeah, Hyder know, coughs it up. Nebraska didn't have anything to do with not catching a pitch there. That was an easy one. That's helping him too much. Seven forty-two. 22 to 6. Crouch. Short of the 10 yard line. And a reminder that tomorrow we'll have the Tostitos BCS selection show. John Saunders and Terry Bowden, they'll tell you where everybody is going. Florida State and Virginia Tech with Michael Vick. They figured to head on to New Orleans. And if Nebraska holds up their end of it, they would go to the Tostitos Fiesta Bowl, and Wisconsin, of course, will go to the Rose Bowl to play Stanford. Brent, do you feel if Nebraska would have held on last week and finished off Colorado 27-3, that they still would have a shot at the championship? Yes, I do. I Buck do Alter too. Is, uh, stopped. I, I think, Gary, you're, you're absolutely right, because you go back to the Colorado game, and, and you have to say, that Solich Chen Nebraska yes. was lucky. It was. Gary Barnett had a field goal, a makeable field goal at the end of the game. And uh, right. that would have sent them on to a break. They missed it. They're going to overtime. And Nebraska, they took advantage of the break. And, and there they are trailing Virginia right. Tech. As you know, I went up to watch Virginia Tech play yep. in Blacksburg. I think they're a very, very good football I team. I agree. I don't know if there's enough speed in that defensive backfield to hold up when Florida State stretches the field the night of January 4th. But we shall see. I think that uh, an unbeaten team they certainly do a chance, and that's what's going to happen. Crouch is going to keep it again, and Crouch bangs with oh, the six-yard line for a first down. Does he take a beating and keeps playing? What a quarterback. 6.22 remaining, and here before 65,035 in the Alamo Dome, San Antonio, Texas, the home of the San Antonio Spurs. A timeout is being called by Nebraska. So they will talk about it here. They lead it 22 to 6. And we'll take a break.
Crouch broke his helmet on the play. Instead of changing quarterbacks, they took it wise time. Yes. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time to sit back and listen to the Texas and Nebraska bands as Dr. Pepper and the Big 12 Conference search through the stands for today's... Where is that credit sheet? Yeah. Looks like Bebo's packing it in. Right. Bebo's packing it in, and he's letting... Oh, that's let, a great shot. We've got to have a shot. He's tapped all of the <laughs> <laughs> Hey, Bobby, Bobby, we've got to do it. Got to do it. Got to have it, baby. That's exactly what Bebo thinks about right. his performance, that's the, exactly. okay? That's right. That's we got to have it. See, right now, you don't even want to score. Can you change ends? <laughs> Yeah, oh, we got can. To, you got, got to. to. No, you've got to, baby. Why not? Just That's play it life. as live. That's life. Play it as live. As a... <laughs> All right, here's the guys cleaning it up, though. Get the guys cleaning it up with the shovels. No, the right. shovels. The shovels cleaning it up. The trailing guys. Huh? Those guys are a distant shot of them scooping it up. <laughs> And the shovels. Right. And the shovels. Well, Bevo has had enough. He's leaving, but he left his mark all over the end zone. They're out with the shovels right, right. now. Now, see, if you're Nebraska. <laughs> he says, that's this what is what I think about this yeah. performance later. You now, see, if you're Nebraska, with that problem over there, you got to run the ball <laughs> left, don't you? Yeah, right. <laughs> as far left. As you, I think I've seen a little bit of everything. <laughs> that's those live baskets. You never want to work you with know, the animals, do you? Maybe that's why Nebraska keeps live baskets <laughs> on its field. Bevo says, I'm out of here. We stunk the joint yep. out today. <laughs> Bebo's oh, seen a lot oh. of football. He knows a good <laughs> offense. <laughs> uh, oh, there really it is. You gotta First go, down and go. Got to go left. <laughs> Buck Alter does go left. Just short of the five-yard line. You know, today is the last game of the season in our ABC Mobile Unit Phase 2. And we'd like to really thank all the engineers who've been with us uh, all season. They did, a, they did a great job for us. Our director down below, Drew Essikoff. And special thanks to Bob Goodrich. He was our producer today. Folks, back in 1962, he was on the all-high school team out of Dallas Wilson High School. Then he went to play for Hayden Fry at SMU. He was a tight end and a safety, and he was on the Texas Super Team. So I know how... How well he feels when he comes back down here to, to do a football game in San Antonio. Come on, Crouch. Well, Crouch doesn't have No, it. Texas yeah. is in a battle to pull it away, oh, and Texas God. indicating they've got it. A field goal ends the game, and Frank says, I'll be ready for 1999 to end. And Casey Hampton. Took it away from Crouch in that pile. What is that, the 24th fumble they yeah, lost? 24th and or 25th. 49 fumbles on the year. It's unbelievable. And it's disheartening to a football team to turn over the ball inside the 10-yard line. Snap up there. You can see Crouch lets it go. And it's always tough to get back on it because that defensive line is charging. And you're not going to fight Casey Hampton and pull it away from him. Crouch had it. And Hampton took it right away from him. Yeah, that's 25. Remember, it was the 24th that led to the Texas touchdown. But uh, the Nebraska D has been a little tough. And they surround the major who gets it off. Nunez breaks free. Craver forces him out of bounds. But not before it's a first down, a 15-yard gain for the Horn. Well, this is starting to have that feel like the Colorado game. Put up seven points on the board. Of course, now they're going to need eight points. And an onside kick is Texas's only chance. Carlos Polk just limped off for Nebraska and is down on one knee at the uh, near side of a 28-yard line, crawling. And he is uh, the strength of that middle. You can see that is Carlos Polk on the ground in pain. I think he's reaching down toward yeah. his left ankle area. And so Jamie Burrow, a sophomore out of Ames, Iowa, how about Nebraska staying with three linebackers still in the football game? An obvious passing situation here. Time. And 
threw it over Ike's head. Jackson, the linebacker, picked up Ike. Well, here's somebody pulling for the rally. One time, great pitcher at Texas, Roger Clemens from the world champion New York Yankees, wearing the burnt orange down on the sideline. Last time it was Ben Crenshaw, this time it's Roger Clemens. Pretty good alumni base there, Al. Yeah, that's something. Second down. <laughs> Damn, you bet. The major got hit. Oh, Ryan Shaw, this time, isn't it? Jeremy Burrow, the middle linebacker. Wow. It's been a siege all game. So time for Mitch Day 2 for the thrifty car rental postgame report. Let me remind everybody again, it's 8 o'clock Eastern. Do I have the right time for the SEC yep. uh, title game presented by Dr. Pepper? Florida, Alabama. So that's at 8 Eastern. You have a good one now. The winner down there will move on into a BCS Bowl. Can anybody beat Florida and Steve Spurrier twice in one year? Alabama is certainly going to take a crack at it tonight. I think that's going to be a dandy. The major. Under pressure again. Oh, slips this time. Throws a wobbler out of bounds. He made a good evasive move to avoid Burrow, but then all of a sudden he looks up and Julius Jackson's right in his face, and there's been no second-half magic for Major mm -hmm. Applewhite this time, has there, Brian? Five of 16, Gary, for only 73 yards. Yeah, it's been too much rush. I mean, even Roger Clemens would have to understand this. You can't throw under that pressure. And with five minutes to go, fourth down and ten, Stockton trots in to punt. The Nebraska defense has pitched a shutout. Yep, the only score came on a fumble. This is Craver. Wow, can you wow. imagine that? They just do not signal fair catch. They keep on coming out to the 48-yard line. Must he be against the rules. That one. Like I know. He fumbles that one, put Texas right back in the game. Reminder about primetime football tomorrow on ESPN. Emmett Smith, the Dallas Cowboys, look to stay in that playoff picture. They take on the suddenly struggling New England Patriots. And Monday on ABC, this should be kind of interesting. Jeff George and the Vikings take on the Buccaneers. Jeff George with a hot hand, but there's no better defense in the NFL than Tampa Bay. If Tony Dungy's offense could put 22, 23, 24 points on the board every week, I think they'd be favored to win that's, the Super Bowl. That's never happened, but no. and this is one of the reasons it hasn't happened for Major Applewhite today. Hit 20 times. And that's my worst nightmare right there. Now Nebraska will attempt to work the clock down without turning it over again. Miller, the fullback. Not much doing, but the clock, of course, is what Nebraska wants to keep moving right now. You know what's impressive about this effort by the Nebraska defense, Brent? We did Nebraska Texas a and and I didn't feel that a and offense was up to par to face this team. But this the Texas offense is a good offense. They can throw the ball, they can run the ball, and it's been complete domination. This is Nebraska's best defensive effort of the year. And it came in the championship game in San Antonio. Huh? And it's too bad they didn't have one more quarter earlier last week. Miller again. And D.D. D. Lewis stops him, and we go down to Jack Aru. Jack? Well, Brent, when he was recruited, he was called Fearless Frankie. He came from Cleveland, Ohio. He weighed in at a whopping 155 pounds. He was a fullback recruit for Bob Devaney. We asked him earlier if Frank Solich, the coach, would recruit Frank Solich, the player. He said no, and he laughed. But he says, you know, there are other positions on the field. <laughs> I think he would have made him walk on like they do occasionally at Nebraska. Clock can't move fast enough for him right now. Leading it 22 to 6. He's got three and a half minutes. Crouch keeps it. Slants across midfield and uh, down at the 45 yard line, short of the first down. Brent. You alluded to it earlier. I ran the wishbone offense my senior year at Purdue. And taking those kicks all game from the angles on the hips, on your arms, it just wears on you. I'm really impressed with Eric Crouch in this football game. Well, Nebraska certainly could make a strong argument as the team of the decade, I guess, against Florida State. But think of where they might be except for Texas. 
They'd won back-to-back -back titles in 94 and 95. Then they lost that game in the Big 12 championship, the inaugural game, and couldn't play for it. And then they came back the next year. They destroyed Texas A&M in this game and won in Tom Osborne's final game against Tennessee down the Orange Bowl. They shared the national championship in 97. So you're looking at a team that has been awfully, awfully good in the 90s, yep. except for Texas. The way of game on the offense, five-yard penalty, still fourth down. And you could argue the fact that without the inception of the Big 12 Conference, there might be another national championship for Nebraska. Not having to face this Texas team in these championship games. Exactly. The low point of the season on the other side for Texas, well, that was Kansas State 35, Texas 17. Six turnovers to none that day. But uh, they started out poorly, losing to North Carolina State, and they're finishing struggling with uh, that loss last week to Texas A&M. And now they're a little bit desperate. Garcia. And okay. folks, if you just joined us, right. this is what happened to the major. And, and if you're related to Major Applewhite, please turn your TV set off right now, or at least look away, because it's been a long game for the major. He took hits from every direction. 20 hits for a passing quarterback. It's an unbelievable stat. But they'll go on to the Cotton Bowl and play Arkansas if they lose this game. And our bowl season gets underway on December 18th out at the inaugural EA Sports Las Vegas Bowl. That'll be Fresno State and Utah, I believe, playing out there. So it's almost bowl season, huh? First down and 10. The major incomplete. There was Mike Brown. You know, we asked Mike Brown, what appeals to you about the physical side of football? When I'm out there, I feel more a part of the game if I'm out there getting hit or hitting someone. It just, it seems like I'm more at home hitting someone than just running around out there with no contact. Yeah, <laughs> smiles like the friendly assassin, number 21. Major, no, nope. the girl never saw it. And that was Joe Walker, step for step, right with him. Smart coverage by Joe Walker. He knew he had a safety inside, so he played the corner route all the way. See, Joe Walker knows he's got help right here. So when Cavill comes in and goes out, Walker's just going to beat him to the spot. That's how you have to know where your help is, know where it is, wait for him to come back out, turn and look for the ball. When I was in Austin, the coaches told me that the one thing they were going to work on with Kwame in the offseason was getting him with more explosive speed. Usually that's weight training. They said the one thing that they think he could improve on is separation. And if you saw that against Walker, you can understand why. Third down and 10. The major runs away from it, dumps it off. So a creative play for a first down, which stops the clock to 11. You know, there's a lot of talk about teams, Brent, playing together, but sometimes it's more than that. First it's feeding Texas. off each other that really makes you a better defense. Today, this Nebraska defense has fed off their own emotions. One guy makes a play, has helped the next guy make a play. It's been a feeding frenzy. First and 10. Got time, that time. And he hit Kwame, drops it. Fun low! They're going to wave it off. They're yeah. going to call it incomplete. He might have had it. That was a maybe a very nice call for Kwame Cavill and Texas. Crossing route, risk reward over the middle of the field, almost picked off that time by Burrell. Oh, I think he had that ball. Yeah, he was juggling it a little bit, but. But the officials normally. Uh, yeah. yeah, you know what? He didn't yeah, have it. Yeah, he did was he? juggling. Yeah, that was a, a good, good yep. view on that replay. Yeah, good call. Good call. It's been a well officiated game, I think. Yes. Second down and 10. Four wideouts, high snap, middle, Cavill. This time hangs on. Clock stops at 154 inside the 45 yard line. That's a 21 yard gain. And now Texas in their hurry up, coming up to the line. Texas is not blitzing now. They're keeping safeties back, playing the clock a bit. But we. Excuse me, Nebraska's not blitzing right now. I'm so excited about Texas making a play. That was Kwame's 100th catch of the season. So another landmark. Incomplete and a penalty flag. A penalty flag. 
Incomplete. Flag. thrown. Thompson, the intended receiver. First down for him here with 1.39 to go. Need a touchdown, a two, an onside kick. In other words, a whole lot of things have to work. <laughs> <laughs> Texas does have all three timeouts, but scoring is the first order. Down. All right, Texas needs to take the timeout here, don't they? Three timeouts. Their only chance really is an onside kick. Second down after the Nunez catch. Time continuing to tick away on the horns. Major goes in zone. Intercepted on the deflection. Dion Booker. And they have turned the lights out on the Texas Longhorns. Major had a wide open receiver that time, was a bit late with the throw. Thompson goes deep. Ralph Brown is beat. He thought it was going to be an out, but then Brown does the smart thing. Turns around. He doesn't panic. That's a senior that has played a lot of football games, right, Brent? Exactly. And what an outstanding defensive back he is. The third interception of the game. And Texas fourth turnover. Now watch how Ralph handles this. Yeah. The key thing was he didn't panic. He didn't run from behind and tackle the receiver. He turned his head around, maintained it, and that's 50 games of experience. Remember, Ralph Brown was one of the victims back in Austin on a quick slant. Cavill burned him for a touchdown. Ralph Brown remembers, and Eric Crouch takes a knee in a whole lot of frustration. Be washed away. Let us announce our Chevrolet Most Valuable Players of this game. There's an awful lot of candidates from Nebraska. We'll go with the quarterback, Eric Crouch. He scored two touchdowns today. For Texas, Aaron Humphrey, the defensive end, and a recognition of their efforts, Chevrolet will make a $1,000 contribution to each university general scholarship fund at the beginning of this year. Chevrolet will also donate $1,000 to two high schools. Remember this. I agree with you, Brent. Texas is a year away. Mm -hmm. They're going to be a good football team next year. Mm -hmm, you bet. And and I I got a a good I'd too. like to watch some of their spring football because Chris Sims is going to make a run at this thing. So it comes to an end. Three games worth of frustration. Upset by Texas. Ends here today. As the Nebraska Cornhuskers, who were favored by eight, win it 22 to six. So again, our final score: the Nebraska Cornhuskers 22, the Texas Longhorns six. And tonight it's the SEC Championship presented by Dr. Pepper between Alabama and Florida, live at 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific on ABC. Stay tuned now for the Thrifty Car Rental Post Game Report. ABC Sports is online at ESPN.com, part of the Go Network. For Jack Aroot, Gary Danielson, I'm Brent Musburger. We throw you to New York and our colleagues John Saunders and Terry Bowden. John. Congratulations. Is it like a monkey off your back now? Uh, I don't look at it <laughs> quite that way. I, I look at it as a great football team that uh, came through this year. They had one loss. Uh, they come back and they were able to beat the team that gave them that loss. And I just think it's a tremendous bunch of kids, a great coaching staff, and feel very blessed to be a part, uh, part of it. What about the play of your defense today? Exquisite. Yeah, it was really outstanding, and they've been that way all year long. We've got a great defensive football team, and there is no question about it. You know what, though? I, I think that the game, uh, at times offensively, we did the things against an excellent defensive football team of Texas. 
uh, to put points on the board. Our special teams did a good job. I think we credit everybody, but certainly our defense has been tremendous all year long. It was almost as if the offense fed off that defense because they really stepped up, especially in that second half. Yeah, I don't, I don't think there's any question at halftime. Uh, it was a deal where we wanted it to, uh, to be a 0-0 ball game and, and make sure that we continue to play football, and, and they did it. Uh, they were, it's a defense that's very inspiring, and uh, they're very verbal to uh, one another, and uh, they make each other accountable. Congratulations. Thank you. Appreciate it.